Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. I'm Clay, and tonight we are going to be talking about the most heavy metal Transformers in the history of Transformers. That's right, we are looking at a whole bunch of the titanium stuff, plus a couple other things, too. So, yeah, it's mostly all of this. All of this that we have posed here, we've got Titanium Soundwave, Titanium Prowl, Titanium Optimus Prime and Megatron, uh, The Fallen, Rodimus, Grimlock, plus we've also got Super Gobot's Leader One, we've got, uh, we, we've got Super Gobot's Psycho here, mostly because he kind of looks like Prowl. And we've got hybrid style convoy, and we'll be bringing out the original 20th anniversary masterpiece Optimus Prime later in the evening as well. So we've got a lot, and it's gonna be awesome. Oh, oh, yes, yes, okay. <laughs> and so before we get into that, I would like to drink a toast to all of our friends in chat, and so, especially with the weather being kind of cold, and uh, and I've spent the last couple days doing a lot of talking. I was out of town and and presenting and stuff, so got got some rawness in my throat. And uh, don't don't worry, I'm I'm not sick. I'm just tired. <laughs> but I have. Hot tea with love in it, for those of you who are above the age of 20. And so let's go ahead and pour ourselves a little bit of, there we go. All right, so with all that being said, a welcome and a toast to the Machiavellic. And of course, Kyoji. And Setsune. And Amanda. And Joy. And Colini. And, uh, and of course, my lovely wife, Monica. And my good pal, Retrobot, a toast to you, pal. And also a toast to Wesley, who is sleeping on my lap right now. Hold on. Because we know who the real star of the show is here. Look at that. Look at that little guy. He is so tired. Sweet kitty. Yeah. See, he's listening. He, he's got radar dish ears. They just kind of... So, that is... Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming to this heavy metal live stream in, you know, more of a literal sense than the music sense. And uh, since we are doing metal tonight, then our secret word, which has almost slid off of my thing. Wait a minute here. <laughs> we got we got a high tech system here. So that, there we go. All right. So our secret word for tonight is metal. That's right. You know, you, you got some metal in you, pal. And, and I just said it, like, half a dozen times, so I guess I need to drink. Amanda, you are probably going to get your wish, and, uh, and I am going to get incapacitated at some point this evening. But, oh, it feels good on the throat. So, yeah, now see, oh, oh! Do, do, can I have that? Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, we, we've we got Metallica, and that's... I just said it. <laughs> did, did you just... Okay. 
I'm getting trolled by my robot. I just want everybody to be aware of that. I've just been trolled by my own robot. <sighs> so, yeah, here, I'll... We can... Okay, it doesn't quite go in, but... <laughs> here, we'll, 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 we'll put it in the back here. There we go. And now... Yeah! Oh yeah, all right. <laughs> that, that'll keep them going. So, oh, 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 and we, uh, we have a celebration. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, so Savage Shark is here. So a toast to Savage Shark. Welcome, Savage Shark. And you have arrived at just the right time. Because it is Savage Shark's birthday. Now, is it today or is it this week? You know, this weekish. Okay, so we are celebrating Savage Shark's birthday this evening. And so we do have, you know, Monica spent all day baking this cake. That might be an exaggeration. <laughs> Okay, we spent minutes, okay, we spent seconds unwrapping this from the wrapper, and, and more seconds upon seconds getting the aim and flame to strike so that we could have this. So, all right, Savage Shark, I'm going to need you to blow out the candle, so I'm just going to pass this to you through the internet, okay, are you ready? Th there you go. Good job! All right, congratulations, Savage Shark! And, uh, wait, do, do we have a, a, a cupcake for him? I, you, you, a lot, sometimes I have a, a second here. Yeah, we, we have to hand Savage Shark a cupcake through the internet. Yeah, there we go. So. Huh, well, wait. Yeah, that, okay. I'm amazed that didn't land on Wesley. Okay, Savage Shark, here you go. I'm gonna ha hand you this through the internet. Th there you go. Whoa, you are hungry. Okay, well, uh, cheers to Savage Shark. Happy birthday. Oh, oh, we're supposed to sing. Yeah, we have to sing. Wait, here. You know, it's not enough to just do that, so. Oh, my ukulele birthday. And a bucket of cake. My ukulele birthday. And a bucket of cake. This is a ukulele birthday song for Savage Shark. Happy birthday, Savage Shark! And now, uh, uh, I'll have a bite of the cake. Oh. Very good. You're gonna have a totally metal birthday. And I said it again. Okay, hold. And boy, that tastes amazing right after that cake. So, and oh, Brick Wode is here. Welcome, a toast. A toast to Brick Wode. Always a pleasure to see Don on these live streams. Don, wish you could be here, but it's not gonna be long as I will be announcing later on this evening. I might as well just say it now. Next week, Brick Wode himself, Don, the man, the myth, the legend, is going to be here to help me co-host on a live stream all about Skylinks. That's right, we are going to have the ultimate Autobot with the ultimate co-host. Yes, these things. We're, we're lining things up, making magic happen. That's, how, that's what's going on. Uh, oh, I'm... Well, no, I mean the ultimate flesh and blood co-host. I, 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 you are the, uh, I, you're, you're more, you're more than a co-host. You are a friend. 
And, you know, Don, Don is my friend as well, but I don't have to feed Don nostalgia. I feed you nostalgia. And it's, it's because you're important to me. And I want you to live and be happy. Okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, you're, you're a good co-host too. I appreciate that. I didn't realize I was going to get in trouble on this live stream. Uh, so, and you know what? A toast to Retrobot, the other ultimate co-host. So, all right. So, um, before we get started, I would like to shout out to two really really awesome vintage toy stores that uh, that we have visited recently uh, there's DE collectibles which is here in the Pittsburgh area it is in Sharpsburg right yes it is it is in Sharpsburg and uh, uh, yeah it's kind of funny because in preparation for the Skylinks uh, live stream that we are doing next week we uh, we were looking for the Beast Hunter Skylinks and uh, and we checked online and we found one and we ordered it. Well, Monica stopped in there just this past weekend and they had one for what was it like ten bucks? Ten bucks. We could have saved we could have saved money just by stopping in at DNE Collectibles. Uh, they have all sorts of fantastic toys. They have two rooms full of toys, plus an entire back area that's filled with comic books. And just just in case you you know, um, they're oh they don't have the comic books. Oh, that's the one up in Erie. That is Action Toy Man up in Erie that has the comic books in the back. Okay, I'm getting my my vintage toy stores confused, but nonetheless, they still have two two rooms full of toys. And, uh, and they keep an awesome stock of stuff and their prices are always very, very competitive. It is, you know, I, like I said, uh, we could have saved money if we had just gotten our beast, beast hunter Skylinks there instead of jumping to the internet. So if you're ever in the Sharpsburg area, then I recommend them and, and no, they, they, they don't like sponsor Retrobot or anything like that. Uh, the other one is uh, so this week for for those of you who have been following the chat, I was out of town this week. I was in a small town that's not far from Columbus in Ohio, and I was at a place called uh, uh, it starts with R oh 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 um Rebel Toys. That's right, Rebel Toys. They have a really nice shop with a fantastic selection of toys that is currently growing. So I got in there, apparently they, uh, just in the past year, there was a flood, they lost a lot of stock and they are bringing stuff out presently. So, so I was able to get a beautiful condition here, I, I, I got this. I, I got a beautiful condition, Optimal Optimus, that, uh, that features the correct side panels for his arms. And, uh, and you know, it was actually a pretty decent price. Uh, this was under $30. It's, uh, it's not complete and it's not in the box, but beautiful condition nonetheless. And uh, so I was very, very happy with that. I also got Monica, a Starior's figure, and uh, he he even ha has his original sticker sheet. He you know, all of his functions still work. He's got the little the the little uh, wind up thing, and and then you press the button here. Ah, there you go, and then it does that. And so. You know, he's in beautiful shape. He was uh, he was a bit more pricey, but uh, but he's really hard to find. And I know my Monica loves her Star Yours. So you know, this is just a shout out to Rebel Toys. Uh, the the guy that I spoke to, Don, was uh, was really really cool and very friendly. And uh, 
and obviously cares a lot about uh, about what they're doing and their customers. So I had a good time. Also, not a sponsor of the show. We don't have sponsors. We're not opposed to sponsors. Just just in case, you know, just in case anybody out there wants to help us grow, um, we're not opposed to sponsors. But uh, we don't have any. But nonetheless, these are these are all. Uh, retro toy vendors uh vintage toy vendors that are really cool and uh and anytime that i'm in that area i will stop by rebel toys and of course i live in this area so we're always going to dne collectibles so uh tie guy is here so a toast to tie guy wait wait i'm getting my fingers wrong This is catch you later, Bill and Ted. <laughs> oh, for anybody who hasn't figured it out, I am the single most uncool person that you have seen on the internet, and I wear that badge with honor. So, uh, yeah, thank, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's let's get this party started, shall we? Let's let's. Uh, take a little bit of a trip back into the past and I'm gonna clear out some of these guys so that you can see everything that we're talking about. We'll park Megatron and Psycho and everybody off to the side here. There we go. And maybe move the Fallen. And, and Prowl. And sound wave. Look, we got an inbox sound wave, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, we're going to be showing him in just a little bit. I I'm I'm sure that he's been opened before, but not by me. So, uh, oh, he's never been opened. This is a never been opened. Holy crap! Okay, so this is exciting. We are going to do a genuine unboxing from D and E Collectibles. We got this at D and E Collectibles, and. Uh, and it was actually really cool. So we're going to be showing this very shortly. That's really exciting because uh, that is like a 15-year-old toy still in box. And we are going to ruin its value by unboxing it today. And let's just park Grimlock in the back there and take my little white box out of the way. So... So you see what we have here. This is Super Gobot's Leader One. And his one wing just kind of wants to dip a little bit. Uh, and, but I really like this toy. Now this would have come out uh, probably in 1983. Uh, he is very, very similar to the original Leader One. He's just bigger. But, uh, but it's a beautiful version of an F-15. And, uh, and it, it, you know, it looks great. He has real landing gear. And, and this is all die cast. I mean, look, you know, he does have plastic on him. The wings are plastic. Uh, the tail is plastic. Uh, the arms are plastic. The nose cone is plastic. But then he has metal in his uh, in his chest here he has metal around the body oh crap I <sighs> the secret word is metal so I, I have to drink now how, how did I how did I forget that I this is this is gonna go badly for me. I can tell already. So, oh, Connie Field is here. So a toast to Connie Field. Connie, it appears that I'm going to be getting inebriated tonight. Just in case you're wondering, if you want to see it happen, apparently it's gonna to happen tonight. Because this this is our secret word and. I, I, I apparently don't be, don't know how not to say it. So, uh, that's, 
That's two cups of, of happy tea. We're just going to go ahead and fill this up a third time. It's starting to feel light. <laughs> oh, I am an unwise individual. I'm, I'm just throwing this out to everybody. I am an unwise individual. <sighs> All right. So anyway, uh, getting back to super leader one. So he is, uh, he is weighty. Like, like you feel him and this is, this is the toy that if you throw it at your sister, she, she's going to bleed and then you're going to be grounded for like a month. Uh, so, so my, so I'm just going to say, don't, don't throw this at your sister. Uh, that violence is wrong. <laughs> let, let me just take a moment to say, we here at Retrobot do not advocate violence between siblings or anyone else. Violence is wrong. Okay, back to back to robots that fight. So we, we've got Super Leader One. He's got very nice looking landing gear that's made of a material that's not plastic. And uh, you know, even even the underside looks decent you know there's not a lot of extra kibble or anything yeah you can you can see a robot head in here and you can see a little bit of gap here but but you know he's even from all angles he is very very jet shaped and he looks great i love this toy this is one of my favorite toys Yo, know, this is one that if there was a fire and I'm going to race into my house, okay, there's way too much to grab. But I'm going to want to I'm going to want to try and grab leader 1 here because he's just so neat. And so, let's go ahead and put in the landing gear here. And understand that that Gobots entered the market be a little bit before Transformers. So you had all of these machine robo toys rebranded re as GoBots that had these die cast something parts. And then you also had the rebranded die clones that became Transformers, which shared very, very similar manufacturing techniques and also had a lot of die cast something parts and plastic parts to make robots that usually weren't very posable. Uh, you know, you, you would oftentimes get some arm movement, but that was about it. Nonetheless, he's got a really good robot mode. He looks great in robot mode. And let me adjust the light so that he's not in the shadow. There we go. But you know, the detail on him is very nice. I kind of miss the vents that are on the smaller version of this figure. They add a little bit of character to his chest that's missing in this larger version. But, uh, but other than that, he looks so much like his smaller counterpart. Uh, there is a little bit of hollowness here on the insides of the, uh, the arms. And here you can see in this this blue leader one, the events that I'm talking about. Now they've got stickers over them and I don't want to take the stickers off, even though to be honest, I don't like the stickers. Uh, you know, I feel like the, the stars don't add anything to the jet mode. Uh, they, they just seem silly, but that's the way it's supposed to be. If I had a second one in this color scheme, I would probably be more inclined to get rid of the stickers, but this is my only one. I'm going to keep it as original as I can. Um, but nonetheless, this is leader one. He is heavy metal. Oh, I said it again. Darn it. <sighs> oh gosh. And, and you see, you see how the color of my face has changed while I'm talking. I'm feeling this happen. So And we're starting to get to the point where I'm losing my willingness to care about it. 
that's dangerous because we're only in the first 24 minutes of this live stream. I also have to shift my legs because my leg is cramping and, 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 and that's going to make Wesley very, very unhappy. Here he is. Here he is. Oh, poor cat. Poor cat. Did I move? Yeah. Oh, oh, the leg cramp. <laughs> oh, it's bad. It's so bad. All right. So that is Super GoBots Leader One. Actually, you know what? There is a there is a copyright on the back so we can see when he was manufactured and let's just go to that side cam and focus in so oh look at that that is 1985 so he was a little bit later but uh nonetheless when uh when people like well me are thinking back to the toys that they loved when they were kids. We, we do miss that heavy weightiness. You know, I, I compare Leader One to like, I've got Ricochet here and I mean, there's no contest. It would take me like a box full of Ricochets to equal one Leader One. Uh, so Kyoji says, you know who could have used a bit of die cast? The original Constructicons, especially Hook. There would be a lot less snapped hook legs if that vacuum metalized chrome part was actually die cast metal. Metal. Yes. Um, so. This, this one's for a toast for Kyoji for a very astute observation, which I'm going to comment on in a second. This is because you got me to say metal. I saw it coming, too. And then it was, that it was too late. It was, it was too late. Uh, so, yeah, Kyoji, um, I agree. Uh, when I got the Constructicons when I was a kid... Uh, I have to say that the mostly plastic construction was disappointing. Uh, this was supposed to be the big guy, the big threat, you know, the the big bad, and he he was a fraction of the weight of, say, Jetfire, who was about the same size. So, uh, and absolutely, a little bit of die cast. <laughs> would have helped his legs not snap off. Although, mine did not, but my friend Joe, who also had Devastator, his legs snapped off. Yeah, they absolutely did. And Joy says, more tea will help with the leg cramps. Uh, you know what? That is a totally metal suggestion. So, thank you, Joy. That, that's a, an excellent suggestion. We're, uh, we're two and a half cups in. <laughs> I think it's only like a four cup pot. <laughs> That's uh, so bad. It's so bad. What are you people doing to me? Why do people want to see me hurt my brain? I understand why, because I would want to see it too. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's... That is leader one. That is just an example of what we have all been craving. And so, of course, you fast forward a little bit to around uh, maybe 2006, 2007. You know, at this point, we're over 20 years in the future. And now... The, those of us who were kids in 1984 are entering the workforce. Well, we've been in the workforce, but we're actually finally getting into positions where we can design things and have control over the destinies of, say, toy lines. You know, the important stuff. And, you know, not, I, I, I was in the workforce since I was, well, okay, I was... I was actually working at 13, but, uh, but you know, that was delivering newspapers. And then, then I was slinging pizzas 
for a long time. I, I, I delivered a lot of pizzas over my days. But then you get into your 20s and your early 30s and you're actually getting into positions that, that pay money that you could conceivably live off of, hopefully. And, uh, and so the, the young adults remember how much we loved those die-cast toys and we start trying to bring them back. And that gets us to our next one. This one's special. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. This one is special. I'm gonna bring this forward. This is hybrid style convoy. Leader one, don't don't get jealous. I, I, I love you, Leader One. Okay? I gave you your due. So yeah, no, no, now don't pout. Okay, Leader One is is pouting a little bit, but that's you know. He's, he's always a little bit salty when, when he gets followed up by a Transformer. So this is hybrid style convoy. And I realize that that from this angle, his, his vehicle mode, admittedly his vehicle mode is, uh, is probably the weakest feature of this otherwise amazing toy. Now, let me show you some things about this. First of all, notice that the trailer clips in with a pivoting joint. That's really cool. And this trailer is gorgeous. Look at the detail on that. I mean, that's fantastic. So this was designed by, and you know what? I'm gonna read the name because I wanna try and get it right. Uh, this was uh, designed by Shoji Kawamori. I hope I got that right. Shoji Kam Kawamori. And he was, uh, I believe that he was the lead designer on the toy, the Diaclone toy that became known as Optimus Prime. Now, what you have to understand is this thing is tiny. It is, I mean, look at my thumb. Okay, it is so little. So yeah, you know, I've got it zoomed in to the nth degree here. And so you can see, you know, all the imperfections of, you know, a little, how the, the grill is, you know, can move around a little bit and there's a little bit of play in the arms. But understand that this is tiny. It is so tiny and yet this toy is so amazingly detailed. And then you look at things like the detail of the rubber tires back here. And you know, now the, the, these ones, wait, is that rubber too? Yeah, those are rubber too. So, you know, he's, and the molded in tread and the uh, the fuel tanks and everything. I, this is, this is a really, really neat toy. I got this at a convention you know, this is obviously not the kind of thing that you could get at a normal toy store, but, uh, but now it, you, you futz with things enough and they do line up and then his vehicle mode looks a lot better, but because it is so tiny, the smallest amount of play in the joints really kind of makes things look a little bit wonkier. Um, you know, there's there's a little bit of robot pelvis back there, but nonetheless, uh, it, it, it's just here. Let me put this in in scale, and, and so you can really appreciate it. So there there you go. That's really what we're talking about. This is the most detailed and interesting Optimus Prime that you can fit in the palm of your hand. It's also got a lot of die cast metal parts and fortunately my my loving wife has brewed more happy tea for me to be able to celebrate making that statement with so so here we go uh, let's go ahead and let's show off his, you know, the, the part that makes him really, really uh, pop. And that is getting to see him in robot mode because he looks great in robot mode. And yeah, you can, you know, you can pick apart the, the vehicle mode 
but uh, but it, it's uh, it's a it's still a functional vehicle mode that uh, that very clearly says, "Hey, I'm a truck," and uh, and it's very nicely manufactured. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's a lot of complexity here that that makes things hurt a little bit, but I'm gonna forgive it because, to be honest, to me, this is like a miniature masterpiece. I, I, I really think that it's fair to say that this is a miniature masterpiece, even with the uh, the little extra gaps and things in the uh, in the cab. And so, uh, so let's see. Kyoji says uh, Kawamori also created the Macross franchise, including designing the VF1 Valkyrie. So he was responsible for what became the original Jetfire toy. Thank you, Kyoji. Uh, you know, he is, he's kind of amazing. Let's just say, you know what, this is a toast. Okay, this first toast is to Kyoji for, for letting us know. And this second toast is for Shoji Kawamori for being an absolutely amazing designer that created toys that I love. And you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. So do you. Shoji, wherever you are, I salute you, sir. So, so let's go ahead and, uh, you, you know, I'm going to do this facing the camera because this guy is tough. And I would love to show you every little detail on the, on the close camera, but I, I actually have to kind of look at this rather than looking at the screen while I do it. So... Of course, it's Optimus Prime. You start by splitting the legs in the back. And then we've got the feet down here. Let's, uh, the feet are on a pivot. He's so tiny and I'm, and it, it's been a while. So uh, I'm going to rotate the tires so that they go to the back. And then you rotate that, there you go. And so now we've got we've got this this little thing happening in the foot. And I'm going to try and and make this work here. So the foot needs to come out. Foot needs to come out. And I see the joint and I want it I want it to come out and make a foot, but it's it, it's catching on something go oh you know what I know what it is extend the legs extend the legs and then that will release the foot that's so smart I mean granted I, I might have ended up breaking my toy if I didn't know to do that but the fact that they have that interlocking mechanism inside the legs oh gosh that is so cool so that, those are our Optimus Prime legs, and those are great looking legs. I'm, I'm just gonna say, they're great looking legs already. Now we pull out the sides here. Now, the of course, because he's Optimus Prime, and you see this again and again and again, toy designers that really want to pay homage to Optimus Prime and the Gen 1 toy, they don't just make a robot mode that has windows on the chest and it turns into a truck they also try to mimic that original design that original transformation sequence and I I, I love that I love that I, I think that it's so so neat when they can incorporate the act of transforming as part of the design and so with this guy of course his arms do that thing where they pull out from the sides and this is no different now there's a little peg in there so you have to kind of get your your finger yeah right <laughs> so you get the peg to disengage with that side panel and you pull the arm out and we're going to do the same thing on the other side and see this is where having the grill on the pivot 
which you know kind of hurts the uh, the vehicle mode is very nice because if this weren't able to pivot then I would break that bumper whenever I was trying to transform it having it able to pivot enables me to get my fingers in there oh 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 now this is just a snap-on part so we'll just clip that right back onto the arm so there we go you see we got the arms like that and here's something that I love I I wish that that the original gen 1 Optimus Prime did this watch this this is like magic look at that look at that that is such a simple solution to having his fists in there and still having this knockout for the wheel. That was, even when I was a kid, with the original Optimus Prime toy, he had these skinny arms that had this knockout for a wheel and then you had to add the fists. Not a problem in this one, they just added this piece which flips down like that. And look at how well that works. Oh gosh, that's smart. Oh boy, that's smart. I love it. I just love it. So now we've got the body in this configuration. You can see that the midsection is on this kind of sliding joint that also does a pivot thing. And so we're going to need to do some stuff here. And this is where things get really, really, this, this is where things get a little wacky. You're going to take the wheel. It's on this little moving piece that makes up his, the side of his abdomen. You're going to pivot it up like that. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So watch again, you pivot it up like that. And see, that's why in truck mode, there was that little curve along his stripe. It's to make room for that tire. And now, this is going to come down like this and this the other one's going to do the same thing and now okay here we go this is let's see I, i'm trying to remember whether i need to open the the windows or not i know that with uh with uh masterpiece prime you open the windows i don't think i need to well, let's see. Let's uh, let's rotate this around. Oh yeah. Okay, so we rotate that around, and now this piece right here. So it, they they they're on these little tiny arms. Oh, and it, it just came off. So you see that little kind of arm thingy? I'm gonna put that back on there. Once again, th thank you, Shoji, for for. Uh, snap together hinge joints that just go right back together without breaking. Uh, Savage Shark asks, does this one have a matrix? It sure as hell does. Savage Shark, happy birthday. Your, your tiny hybrid prime has a matrix in it. Okay, it's actually my tiny hybrid prime. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get you a tiny hybrid prime for your birthday. I'm a, I'm a bad friend. But nonetheless, okay, so we have these things here. And you're gonna pivot the whole body like this. And now these things do this thing. They're going to flip around. Oh, I put one of them on upside down. <laughs> Oops, huh, sorry. So I think it's this one that I've got on upside down. What? Oh, okay, so there we go. Yeah, I've, I've got this one on upside down. There we go. Okay, so this comes out like this, and then it goes in like that, and then everything slides down together like that, and then, oh, wait a minute, here. I think, I think that the bumper, yes, okay, the bumper folds underneath, this is a really complicated toy. And, and boy, I'm so glad that I didn't save this for the end of the live stream. I was going to, and I, I'm, I'm gonna be inebriated by then, and there's no way I'm figuring this out then. So, so the, the bumper, you see the bumper there? It actually folds under like that. 
there that's good okay so and then you can close the windows and then now and so now these things can flip around just like that and make up oh thank you and that makes up the sides of Prime's abdomen and then we can open up the back right here and then the head's going to fold around okay you know what I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to finesse this a little bit what can I say it, 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 it there's a lot in this toy that there's just a there's just a freaky amount of stuff going on in this toy and he's got the head in there but but getting that little thing to pivot come on you can do it okay let me try expanding the body and getting getting this out of the way so okay we'll get those and I'm gonna open up Nope, okay, I was hoping to get access to the head to kind of be able to push it out a little bit, but I was not. So, let's go ahead to the other camera so that you can see what I'm messing with. So, there he is. And there we go. Come on, you can make it. You can make it. It's catching, which is unfortunate. Oh, come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. Okay, so uh, I, ha I actually had the door open too wide. The bottom of the door was catching on the head. So you have to have the, the door open about like that, and that will give the head enough clearance to be able to come out and now we can snap that shut we can put our little side things in now the side things should be able to kind of snap in a little bit hopefully taking a look here yeah there we go okay and close that and you put and there we go. There he is. All right, so this, this is hybrid style convoy. And just look at that. I mean, that is just an amazing Optimus Prime toy. Uh, you can see that his muzzle, the paint on his muzzle has chipped just a little bit from where it hits the hinge in the door. Um, but nonetheless, this is just an amazingly detailed toy. And it's so tiny. I mean, this guy is like three and a half inches tall. He's the size of a G.I. Joe figure, except he features a 47-step transformation. He's got, uh, he's actually got, uh, you know, he can hold, hold his weapons and stuff like that. And here, so let's just so, show this for Savage Shark because it is your birthday. So we open this up and look at that. He has a removable matrix. Uh, okay, here. There we go. So, there we go. He's got a little removable matrix. Okay, here. You stand there, and I'm gonna try and get this in, in focus. Look at that. That is so cool. I mean, it's so tiny. It is the size of my pinky nail. Look at that. So that is 
is hybrid style convoy and we haven't even gotten to the trailer that's the thing so of course we have the trailer here uh, actually if I remember correctly so so it's got opening doors uh, let's see Try and do this right okay so it's got opening doors it's also got a ramp that comes out let's see here if i can get it to come out there is a way to get it to come out and i, I and some tools required maybe Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go ahead and transform this because that just needs to happen. So we've got the jetpack that uh, I'm trying to remember the episode where the Autobots were wearing jetpacks. Uh, it says in the wiki article, and I've already forgotten. But so we can do this. go and look at this oh, oh here close this door so there we go and it says there's some lag okay so and uh Apparently we're getting some stream lag. Uh, I apologize. I don't know what's causing it. Uh, we'll see what uh, what we can do to uh, try and improve the the stream quality. Although, sadly, every other time that there's been stream lag, it's turned out to just be Verizon. Freaking Verizon. I I don't like Comcast, but I hate Verizon. Verizon is faster than Comcast, but, but, um, yeah. So, uh, nonetheless, we do have, okay, so, uh, are you, are you seeing any lag? Okay, so, uh, Monica seems to be saying that, that, uh, it looks okay on her end, so hopefully it's okay on your end now, and that was just a temporary thing. Uh, nonetheless... We do have, so I'm just going to try and finish putting Convoy's jetpack on here. And it seems like there's something kind of getting in the way. Oh, I know what it is. So there's this little tiny thing in the back that folds down. And now we can put the backpack the rest of the way on because it actually fits beautifully as one would expect from a fantastically engineered tiny, tiny toy from Shoji Kawamori. So, uh, see how comfortable I'm getting saying that? So, yeah, here, take a look. That is Prime with his jet pack. We'll put the arms in. So, you know, he's looking good with his little jet pack there. And now we'll go ahead and open. And see, notice that when when it opens, the little feet come out. So they, they automatically come out. I think I clicked that one out of its thing, but there we go. And then we've got this. You know, we've got the whole command deck here. And then there is a ramp in here, and I really want to pull it out, but I can't get my fingers in there. Oh. Pr see, I, I tried that, and it's not... Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's... I'm, I'm trying to do the press-in, pop-out thing, but it's not pressing. So it, it might be... It might be caught on something. I don't know. Um... If I had my tweezers, but I don't have my tweezers. Let's 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 try this. Let's see if I can just 
Huh. Oh, oh, we got tweezers? Okay, let's see if tweezers will help. Yeah, I, I do remember it being a press in, pop out thing. Uh, I've already pulled out the landing stuff, so yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to force it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so when I pushed out this, it was spring loaded and it popped out. So that's really cool. Uh, so there we go. We've got the command deck. We've got Optimus Prime with his ion blaster, which he can hold. So look at that. I mean, this is all the cool stuff that the original Optimus Prime toy had. I think that this compartment opens. So yeah, the compartment opens. You've got the mechanical arm thing here. Uh, it, it's even got a claw that opens. You can replace the hand with a translucent battle axe. It's got, it's got the, the fuel pump thing. And if you open up these little doors here, you've also got other hand positions. So you can replace the fists with other hand positions so that your Optimus Prime can be in different cool poses and he can be pointing at things or he can be picking his nose or, you know, whatever he needs to be doing. I mean, are, are you starting to see why this toy is just absolutely phenomenal? Th this, this is the reason that I'm not going to criticize having a, a a little bit of wonkiness in the truck mode because everything about this toy is just freaking amazing and getting getting this all in one tiny little package uh, that's it's it's everything that you could hope for in an Optimus Prime toy it's got full articulation it's got a, a, yeah, a really, really complex transform, and it looks great. It just looks great. So that is hybrid style convoy. I love that toy, and, uh, and I'm really excited to get to show them to you. Uh, so wasn't it like, no, it was not. It was not. Tw so uh, Monica was asking me if it was like $30 or something. No, no. If I remember correctly, he was like 60 bucks. Yeah. Um, but that was convention tr pricing. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, when he first came out and, you know, if you weren't at a convention where you're really only going to see him at that convention, he would be less... Uh, I, I can't imagine how much you'd pay right now. Uh, oh, and Tim, Tim Kangaroo is here, and so is Mazenfur. So a toast to Tim Kangaroo. And hold on, Mazenfur, because you, de you deserve uh, a, a, a full salute here. So there we go. I had to, I had to refill my cup. And, and just so that you know, Tim Kangaroo and Mason Fur, this is this is cup number three, and and my teeth are starting to tingle. So that's where we're at. A toast to Tim Kangaroo. A toast to Mason Fur. And you see the redness in my face as uh, as the love in that tea really starts to kick in. It's gonna be a fun night. So, uh, so Machiavellic says, Hey Clay, weird question. Have you ever met Al Yankovic? I have. And do, do we want to hear this story? So weird Al Yankovic, for those who don't know, I am a huge, huge weird Al Yankovic fan. I have loved weird Al pretty much 
Weird Al was like my first love in music and is still one of my great loves in music. And Weird Al was putting on a concert in Pittsburgh and uh, and I believe that I was dating my girlfriend Tracy at the time. And she she is an avid music lover. And so she understood concert ethics. Uh, I, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, and at the end of the show, she saw some people hanging around the the sort of the backstage area, like like just off to the side, but but a little bit further back. And she's like, "We need to go over there." And it's like, oh, 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 "Okay, why?" And well, we waited there for about twenty minutes, and Weird Al came out and started signing things and getting photos with people. And I had made this big banner for him that we held out during the show. It was it was about six feet long and two feet tall, and it had a cartoon picture of Weird Al's face in the middle, and it said on one side, we love you, Al, and on the other side, it said, you're just like, uh, let's see, you're just like Moses, except you didn't have the Ten Commandments and you didn't lead people through the desert and you didn't get a, you didn't make build a big boat with two of every animal. Oh wait, that was that was Noah. Well, you're sort of like him, but not really much. And and the text just kept going on and on and on and getting smaller as as you went down. And Weird Al signed my banner and he laughed and he told me it was great and he probably thought what a what a complete psychopath please get this guy away from me i was starstruck and yeah and i yeah i told him i was his biggest fan just like every other dweeb that he's ever met and uh and i was uh, my iq like shrank to the size of a pebble so that was me meeting weird al yankovic uh, it, it was awesome. So, thank you, Weird Al. This is a toast to Weird Al. And this is a toast to Tracy, because, you know, honestly, without Tracy, I would have never met Weird Al. So, and Joy asks, what kind of <laughs> is Retrobot made of? You thought you could catch me with that. Well, oh, the shame. Oh, joy, trying to trip me up and force me to drink delicious alcoholic hot tea that's very soothing to my bro. Well, I'll tell you what kind of metal Retrobot is made of. <laughs> this is for you, Joy. Um, Retrobot is actually built out of a whole bunch of of retro consumer products. There's a lot of plastic in Retrobot. Uh, now, his uh, his chin, like his neck joint here is actually made out of aluminum. And then this is made out of a Gen 1 iPod home. And then he's got some aluminum around his eye here and aluminum here. And then he's got uh, some uh, some uh, cheap steel here, you know, very thin steel. Uh, also steel here, uh, and then uh, then this is probably steel. Uh, then there's some more plastic here, and uh, and then some uh, some more plastic bits. He's got rubber bits. Um, I believe that that there is a combination of metal parts from this Polaroid camera that makes up his neck. And, uh, and probably it feels like very, very, uh, a very old plastic. I'm, I'm guessing that's similar to Bakelite. So he's got a lot of different materials making him up. Uh, you know, obviously a lot of steel fasteners and, uh, and you know conductive electronic bits so yeah Ret retrobot is made of a lot of stuff and uh and strangely enough 
when when we were transplanting the the alien pilot that we saved from the the spaceship crash where we found him uh, we discovered that when I tried to use modern componentry he rejected it uh, it, it just didn't take and but uh, and so at the time I didn't know why but uh, I, I kind of ran out of the nice stuff and I started using parts that I had laying around and uh, and so uh, and then when I started using older stuff uh, amazingly enough he was able to adapt and I, and I guess that's tied to him being a retrobot so uh, oh, and uh, Chris Remley is here. A toast to Rick Chris Remley. Thank you for joining us, Chris. And we are celebrating Savage Shark's birthday for those of you who tuned in a little bit later. So grab your closest confection and everybody wish Savage Shark a happy birthday. And with that being said, and my mouth being full, you know, in the world of snack cakes, I know, we're, we're segueing. I'm almost done with my third cup of happy, so I'm allowed to segue. In the world of snack cakes, there's two heavy hitters that I think of right off the top. There's Little Debbie and there's Hostess. And while I really want to give the nod to Liv Little Debbie because, uh, because what's his name? Um, Will, Will Ferrell uh, dressed as De Little Debbie on, on uh, what was it? Uh, Conan O'Brien or something like that. And that was hilarious. But I have to say, uh, Little Debbie can kind of suck it because Hostess has it all. Alright, Hostess is the good stuff. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry, little Debbie. I mean, respect, sort of, but, yeah, it's all Hostess. Can't argue with Twinkies. So, nonetheless, this is Hybrid Style Convoy an amazing toy just an amazing toy and uh and if anybody ever sees this at a convention if if it's at a price that you're willing to pay um you want him and you know now that you've seen him you can forgive some of uh, some of the uh, vehicle mode because everything else about this toy is absolutely top notch 100% top notch. It's beautiful. It is, it is a work of art. That that's that's what this toy is. It this is this is a work of art. So, very 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 happy. I'm happy to be able to show it to you. I am. You know that because this is exciting to me. It, it's such a, you know it's something that I don't that that I actually kind of handle with kit gloves and I don't show to a lot of people so I'm glad that I'm getting to share it with you. Now that being said, is it heavy? Not really because it's tiny. But it is metal and that's the word for tonight which means that when I say it, I'm going to have to take more uh happy juice. Retrobot agrees. Yeah, buddy. All right. And I got to finish my cupcake. So, so these were, yo, know, that was 2006 when we got hybrid style. And, uh, you know, they, they did a couple different designs. One was like Star Convoy and then one, the others were different repaints of the one that I just showed you. But it just goes to show that there was this desire to to somehow recapture the I don't know, the feeling of like like yeah, I've got a, an original crasher here and 
you know, even even just having her and that and and that weight that comes with the mm, 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 stuff, uh, you know, the non-plastic. Uh, there's something about that that's captivating, and it, and it taps into our childhoods, and and we want that, and even the newer figures. That, that have fantastic robot modes and excellent articulation and really good vehicle modes, they, we, we still crave that, I, 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 there's no other way to say it, that metal. We, we crave that metal. And, and now I have to drink because I said it twice. So, so that, uh, that, so that brings us to, I'm, I'm looking right now, you see me looking at the side because I'm trying to see what the, the time, you know, like what the, the time frame was on this. Okay, so it was around 2007, and, uh, and again, right around the same time, we had the Titanium series. Now... Uh, Titanium series is something that is done by Galoob, and up to this point they had been doing miniatures, and, and I've got one right here. Uh, now they'd been doing miniatures of things like Star Wars and stuff like that, and of course Galoob was best known for Micro Machines. Uh, at some point I'm assuming that Galoob got gobbled up by Hasbro because everybody who's not Mattel gets gobbled up by Hasbro. So, uh, and, and so they started producing Transformers under their Titanium line, which Titanium, like I said, had, had uh, before then been used for like little vehicles of, uh, little metal vehicle. Oh, I said it again. Gosh darn it. Okay, wait here. Um, little die cast Star Wars vehicles, and there were some other lines that they did that. Uh, what was that? Oh, Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Uh, I can't read lips. And Monica tries to tell me things that I need to know by, by kind of mouthing the words to me. And to me, anytime a beautiful woman mouths words to me, I assume that she wants to get frisky. Do you want to get frisky? Okay, good, good. Live stream's over. <laughs> That's it. Uh, no, no, okay, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. Um, but so uh, there were a couple things that came out of the Transformers Titanium line, and some were little non-transforming figures like this one. And uh, these fit right into their wheelhouse. This was the kind of stuff that they were used to doing. They, you know, granted these figures are, uh, you know, certainly more dimensional than a spaceship or uh, or a little vehicle, but they're still there's still very few parts, and uh, there's not, you know, you've got a, a pivot point here in the shoulder and and in the chest, but there's not a whole lot of moving parts. It's just a neat little statue for the most part. And and that and that that's what they were that's what they were comfortable with, but of course, if you're going to have a line of die cast transformers, you want die cast transformers, and that is what leads us to this. Now, this was not one of the first ones to be done. In fact, I feel like Soundwave was one of the last. Uh, but nonetheless, this one is mint in box and it has never been opened. I, I, I didn't realize that I, yeah, I, I, see, I see that it's got the things I thought maybe the previous owner had very meticulously put it back in the box. I guess it's never been opened. We're, we're good. We're gonna destroy history? Oh boy! <laughs> so, and see, that, that is metal. <laughs> Murder face is metal. And I need to pour myself cup number four. Yeah! 
because on Murderface's birthday, he got to destroy American history. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead, let's do the full unboxing thing here. I'm gonna put him over here and I'm gonna try and set the camera in a position where it'll be able to see what's going on. And boom. Uh, let me adjust the light so that there's not quite so much glare on the package. You know, it's a trade-off. I can either have glare on the package and see what's inside or not have the glare and have everything be dark. I think I'm gonna leave the glare if that's all right with everybody. And I'll just try and tip the, the thing so that you don't see as much reflection. So here is the box. And you can see from this box that titanium things, when they were on the shelves, they, they looked like something special. They really, I mean, you know, you have this big clear window and the trapezoid shape of the box. No, that's not foreshortening from my camera position. This is a trapezoid shaped box. You've got some really nicely done artwork on the side. This representative of Soundwave's chest and some of his detailing. Uh, and then you look on the back and it shows the alt mode. It shows you upcoming figures. And it also has a full bio. Look at this. So this is a toy that actually has a full bio, just like the Gen 1s. Behind every villainous leader is a cadre of uh, is a cadre of shadowy figures who remain hidden, offering vital encouragement, support, and advice. These secretive advisors are often the true power behind the leader, for they control the flow of information that motivates his actions. They feed him flattery and lies that allows him to continue his path of destruction without suffering the pangs of conscience or the deprivation of being proven wrong. You know, it, I'm sorry, this is sounding way too much like real life. I'm going to stop reading right there. <laughs> I'm sure there's a wiki article that says the the uh, the rest. Uh, okay, I'm going to say it. Soundwave is one such individual, a creature of secrets and si silence. He fades into the shadows of his commander, Megatron, all the while subtly steering the, de the Decepticon commander to his own ends. He prefers to remain out of sight and out of the fight, often appearing only as a menacing presence behind his leader, arms folded, inscrutable visage, promising nothing beyond cold calculation. Despite his maneuvering to improve his status, he is totally loyal to Megatron. He hides information or lies only if he believes it would be to his leader's detriment to hear the truth. So, yeah, you have close-up picture of Soundwave. Now, right away when I'm looking at this product photo, I'm noticing a couple things. Uh, I'm noticing that the geometry does not look super detailed or super tight. Uh, I'm noticing that that, uh, that cassette door seems to be laying on the table in front of him, which does contain a cassette, which is laser beak, but, uh, but it's, uh, you know, it's, I remember seeing this in the store and looking at this image and thinking, ooh, I'm not sure. And and it, it obviously you know, kind of turned me off enough that I didn't end up buying it because I saw it in the store and I didn't buy it. Uh, so here's the other side. It's got more of that Soundwave artwork. And then here you can see, and this is, this is what's, What's really interesting about this series is that titanium is a, wait here, let me try and get that, is a subdivision of micro machines. So this technically is a micro machines toy because the titanium series is actually part of micro machines. Uh, it is 
a subdivision. So, um, and I think that, I think that that's where some of the problems that we saw in the tiny, in the titanium line stem from, because this is a group of designers and manufacturers that haven't been designing transforming robot toys ever. Takara's been doing it at this point for well over 20 years. Closer to 30 at this point. Well, let's see. It would have been 2007. So yeah, it would have been over 20 years, not, not closer to... Well, here's the thing though. Diaclone came before 1984. They were already making things that turned into stuff well before then. So, yeah, I'd say that Takara... Diaclone, 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 Diaclone. So, um, yeah, Diaclone had been around, I think, since 1981. And there were even toys with with gimmicks and robot toys that did stuff before then. So they had a good 25 years of experience making, oh, excuse me, too many of these teas, um, making transforming vehicles and robot toys and Galoob, they, they did not. And I think that that, that shows in in some of the designs so let's go ahead let's do this oh oh wait oh grayscale is here so a toast to grayscale <sighs> so we're gonna have to do this we're gonna have to open up this package this is gonna happen never before opened I'm gonna cut the the tape. And there we go. And there we go. And we open the flap. And we open this flap and we get, okay, so we get instructions, which, uh, okay, are, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? So, we will be paying very close attention to these instructions. Hey, thank you, thank you. So, uh, let's, let's go ahead and take a look back over here. So, uh, we've also got... We've got a product catalog right here that shows some of the other stuff. Some very nice images of the toys that really make you want to buy them. You know, look at that. Uh, I remember buying... So, so here, here's something. I remember buying this Megatron. And he, the lower half of his waist fell off. It, the we, the joint was so weak it just fell off it was the first titanium toy that I had ever seen and I took it back it was so it was so wonky that I didn't even try and salvage it I just took it back I also thought it was cheese that he has an M emblem on the front of the tank mode um, I, I just don't feel like Megatron would feel the need to put an M for Megatron on, on the front of the tank um, I, I remember at one point seeing Jetfire, but you know, this, this shot makes it look really, really cool. But even in the box, it looked a little wonky and, uh, there's Thundercracker. Thundercracker looks cool. Uh, War Within design, the War Within designs were, uh, were, were a big thing for the Titanium series. And you know, a lot of Transformers fans loved the War Within stuff. So we also have some of these, and, and and honestly, I really never had a lot of interest in the little statues. Uh, I believe that I got this one as a present uh, because you know because I, I just didn't buy them. Uh, they didn't transform. It's like well, if it doesn't transform, I I, I I don't need it. 
So we got that little catalog. That, that's kind of a cool thing. And a little piece of history. And now we pull out the insert and can look at that and I will set the rest of the box aside. So here we have Soundwave, uh, very nice packaging. You know, they've got a whole diorama thing kind of going with, uh, with some stylized stuff going on in the background and he is posed. He's got a very long torso. I'm just noticing that right away. And, uh, and we're just going to have to, to deal with that. Now, here's, the, here's the, the question. How the heck do I get him out of there without destroying the packaging? Um, so, oh. <laughs> Mo Monica says that Megatron... Oh, oh, no. Oh, Brick Wode says that Megatron is secretly a Mysterion. Yes, that's it. Just like Huffer and and um, um, Braun and uh, let's see, Gears. Yeah, uh, Megatron is the other secret Mysterion. So now we know. Na and and knowing is half the battle. GI Joe, Yo Joe. So, uh, do we have maybe um, toenail clippers? I think that we need toenail clippers. Does anybody out there in the internet have toenail clippers? Cause, uh, cause I need to get through those wires and I guess I can go through the back. Oh yeah, I, I can for some of them, but it might be easier to, to just clip them where I see them. Okay, so yeah, let's, let's try these. And we'll go back to the side camera here. So let's, there we go. And now we can pull out laser beak. And let's go ahead and take a look at laser beak. So he's got a couple little feet here and let's get him in focus. So uh, laser beak doesn't look bad. Now laser beak is all plastic. So uh, a little bit of boxiness on the wings. You know, they're, they're, they're not really very wing shaped, but, uh, but you know, we got a, we got a little bird head there and we got some feet and, uh, and I imagine that the transform is pretty simple on, on laser beak here. I'm guessing that, uh, this is going to be a case of flip the head around like that. There we go. And then fold in the, the wings like that and then just flip the feet in. It's a very simple transform and he no longer turns into a cassette because I, I think that this is supposed to be like sort of a Cybertron mode. And, uh, and so he is just maybe some kind of a dated cassette or something, uh, but not an audio cassette. You know, there's no little wheels. I don't hate it. Um, it's not the best laser beak that we've ever seen, uh, but it, it's, it, it is a functional laser beak and, uh, and, and it works. So let, let's go ahead and set him aside for just a moment. And then let's go to Soundwave and try and free him from his bonds. And here we go. There we go. And there we go. And we might be able to pull him out now. There we go. Okay. He's got his little gun there. Now, there is uh, there is a stand in here, and. Uh, and, and actually, I've got a whole bunch of these. You know, I've got got these. Uh, I got a bunch of them over here. Uh, so for the time being, I'm just going to leave that in here because I don't think that anybody cares about watching me take out the plastic stand. If, everybody th if everybody's okay with that, I'm just going to set this aside. Ha <laughs> ha! 
I didn't blow it up, I promise. So, we'll give him his gun. He, he's got a little gun here. Uh, I was wondering if maybe, oh yeah, it does, it does do a slide thing. So you have that. Oh, let me get that into focus. Yeah, there we go. So you can, oh, lose it. You can, it can fly out of your hands, fly across the room and knock over sound wave. So there we go. Okay, so that comes out. Um, kind of stubby. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, I appreciate that there's an effort here, but it is kind of stubby. Uh, not super, super impressive, to be honest. It, 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 it is a gun and, and yeah, I don't hate it, but yeah, it's not super impressive. So I will say that right away he is, yeah, he is weighty. Uh, you can feel the non-plastic material. Uh, I, I wish, so his feet, his feet have these, these, this split foot and then there's a heel here. But the thing is that these are metal and they're very heavy. And I know that means that I have to drink. <laughs> so, oh boy, this is gonna be a long live stream. <laughs> so um, these are very heavy and then these heels barely go past the, 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 uh, the point of gravity, the center of gravity. See, I'm good with words, even when I've been drinking. And, uh, and so, like, he, you can see him wobble. He's, he active, he, he's got his arm extended. And you can just tell that he is eager to flop over backwards. Uh, he's not. So, but yeah, I, 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 I really wish that, you know, like an extra little nub or a little flip out something, but something, he, he, he needs bigger feet. That's all I'm saying. He needs bigger feet because he's not super, super stable. Um, he does seem to have posability. Uh, the joints are weird. Now he's got a knee joint. And here, we'll, we'll try and put him into a cool pose. There we go. He's got a very, very long torso. And, and, and that's really hard to ignore. Uh, I'm going to adjust the light because it seems like it's pretty dark. So there we go. So um, the robot mode is not terrible. It's really not. The, the, the really long torso is kind of distracting. Uh, you know, I, I, want, I want his legs to be attached up here. Not, you know, this, this whole thing happening here is, is just not, not working for me. But that being said, um, he is a, uh, you know, he's got decent articulation. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing a little bit of issues with these collapsing joints here. Uh, let's see, let's see about the whole opening of the chest. Is there a, is there a, a, a button? I don't think that there's a button. I think that you just, I think that you just open it. Yeah, you just open it. And you know what? The, the tolerance on this is actually much better than I anticipated. Uh, it, 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 you know, you can see that it's not floppy at all. It's actually very, it, it's nicely tight. So that's a good thing. Let's go ahead and put laser beak in here. And then you can do that. And boom! Laser beak is in Soundwave's chest. And, uh, and that's pretty cool. Uh, it, it works much better than I expected it to. So, you know, uh, kudos to them 
for uh, for getting that to work. But uh, but you know, obviously, we want to see him transform, and uh, and that's that's kind of important. So let's go ahead and take off his uh, his gun, and I guess you're going to collapse it like that. And then you're probably going to take this off, and you don't need to do anything to it. And my guess is that the head just spins around and folds down just like that. And then we've got this that kind of pegs in on this side. And then we've got this one that pegs in on this side. There we go. And then we've got these hands that, that do something. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're supposed to swivel, but they obviously fold. Let's hold off on folding up the hands until we know what the arms do. So we've got these. Ah, oh, okay, I, I think I see what's going on here. Let me do this. So I think that the arms go behind like this, and then the hands probably go like that. Either that or maybe, you know what, maybe they go like this. That would make a little bit more sense. Yeah, I think that, that that's what's going on. And then we've got, oh yeah, because we've got this little, this little peg here that's going to go into that notch. So, and that's going to go up like that. So that's how that's going to go. And then same thing on this side. Just like that, you shorten the arm, fold in the wrist, and then fold at the shoulder. And now we've got that happening. Now we've got the very, very large crotch, which is going to split. And then we've got the legs, which do a thing here. And I'm guessing that there's that this is going to spin. Let's see. Well, we no, because these are supposed to be in the front, so I think that they just collapse. Yeah, I think that that's it. So I think that these just go up and collapse like that. And then, and then the little nubs that are on the insides of the legs peg in to holes there. And that is the tape deck mode, or whatever this is supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be some kind of Cybertronian thing. But nonetheless, um, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that this is actually not bad. It, it 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 looks better in real life than the photos gave it credit for. I think I think in the photo, it would have been better to show it like this, and then maybe have a uh, a call out with another little image that shows that this opens and has laser beak in it. And, you know, maybe even show it with it like that so that it doesn't look like it's just laying on the table. Because honestly, I was fully expecting this to just kind of flop forward every time I jiggled him. But he's, he's actually pretty solid. And, you know, of course he's got, he's got a lot of nice weight to him. He's got nice, nice articulation. Uh, I, I don't like the long crotch. And, and that's... That's probably the biggest thing, the biggest sin about this toy, really, when it comes down to it, is that the robot mode looks a little awkward. But other than that, this is, this is not a bad toy. Not a bad toy at all. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that we got him. Uh, you know, I... I, uh, I can't say that I regret not getting him years ago. But, uh, but I'm glad to have him now. And he, he, he's a very nice little thing. This is satisfying. I mean, just holding this, th th this feels nice and, and it looks cool. And, uh, you know, I can flip open the thing and I can pull out laser beak and, uh, and see, you can see through, you know, that's a very dark translucent purple, but, but it is a translucent plastic which is a nice touch. And then he's got the little wheel details inside there that you can see through the plastic. He actually looks better with laser beak out of him because they didn't put the details on laser beak. And I think that's a little bit of a missed opportunity. 
But yeah, uh, that is Titanium Soundwave. A surprising, I I'm gonna give him a thumbs up. I'm gonna give him a thumbs up. Uh, you know, is he perfect? No, but he's pretty good. Now I will say though, Soundwave was one of the last Titanium figures to be produced. He was after they had gotten some practice and you could tell through the line that from the first ones to the last ones that they were still figuring things out and the later ones were better and we're gonna see that. So um, Mighty Muffins is here and, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's your first time here. So welcome to the live stream, Mighty Muffins. A toast to Mighty Muffins. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a good time. I'm, I'm doing my doing my things wrong. <sighs> up, up, down, down, B, A, start. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you all right? Okay, you know, at some point, someday, I'll give you more fingers so that you can do this. Someday. It'll happen. Okay. So, um... So yeah, Mighty Muffins, hey, thank you for joining us. And and also Toxic Mario. Oh, oh, to Toxic Mario it yes. is Mighty Muffins. Oh, okay, Toxic Mario, okay. So, yes, thank, anyway. Um, so, Soundwave, yeah, you know what? It's, uh, sound, th this is good, I like it. I'm gonna set it aside. But we just got to open a piece of history and make it non-historical. So, <laughs> so uh, let us move on. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Grimlock because Grimlock is always a, a crowd pleaser. Grimlock is probably one of the most popular Transformers characters in the history of the line. And so when you see Grimlock, you you instantly want him. And I'm going to wheel him out here. So there we go. He's in the background right now. And this is Grimlock in his tank mode. Uh, you can see that his chest doesn't want to stay forward. This is his tank mode. And thank you. Thank you. So had a, uh, I've had a little bit too much to drink. So... Um, now, you look at the tank mode from this angle, and of course it's very reminiscent of the War Within. I mean, it's supposed to be War Within Grimlock. This is, this is him before he became a dinosaur. He's on Cybertron. And, and this tank mode from this angle really doesn't look bad. Uh, notice, notice what I said there, though. From this angle, it doesn't look bad. Now, now when we look at it from from this angle, okay, well, uh, maybe he's sort of a sort of a, a tractor trailer tank. Um, uh, he, you know, he's got he's got a lot of robot leg back here. Yeah, and. And you've got this this turret thing, you know, that, that that doesn't spin. And oh, it's completely empty. It's just it's just this hollow thing with a big hole. It's there's it 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 starts looking a lot more like a robot laying on his belly with a tank turret sort of thing on his back. Um, I mean, the detail on the toy itself is very nice. I, I like the casting here. I, I, I like the, uh, you know, I like what they've done with the treads. And, uh, yeah, I, I like what they've done here. The, the fact that the front doesn't, doesn't want to stay up is a little bit of a problem, but... 
but uh, I, I, I like the design. Of course, you know, this is based off of the uh, War Within comic with Don Figura. Is that how you say that? Don Figura? And, uh, yeah, well, now we have... <sighs> they... <laughs> Now we've got Megatron's head, just because they they do kind of look alike. Uh, but you know this one has cool spider legs and doesn't have half of a robot body sticking out its ass. So yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this is it, it. The alt mode is just kind of unimpressive. It, the the detail is nice. I will give them props. It's it's nicely cast, nicely molded, but uh, but it's not a very very compelling vehicle mode. So Mazenfur wants to know if a GI Joe can ride in there. Boy, that would be cool. Let's find out. Uh, let let's go ahead and get in there, Baroness. Here, bend, bend, your, bend at the knees. Bend at the knees. You can do it. There we go. Oh my gosh. You know what? Uh, okay, now she's kind of kicking his, kicking his chest down a little bit. But nonetheless, uh, that, that adds a whole new dimension to this toy. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, at least you've got this. So it's uh, it's one of the impractical G.I. Joe vehicles that has the person going halfway through it. But don't worry, they, they probably won't get shot because that doesn't happen in battles in G.I. Joe. Um, so we got that. But nonetheless, yeah, it's it's just weird decision, you know, that there's that there's just not a whole lot going on. And I suspect that that's because they, they were struggling with, they were struggling to, to create these toys. I think that there was a lot of, uh, of difficulty with them knowing what to do with this line and how to pull these designs off. And they were, tr they were just going for the simplest solutions that they could. And so they have, you know, the bulk of the robot body uh, just as a robot body that kind of sticks his legs together. And look, look at these feet. You know, what, what, what is going on with that? That there is, you know, it's not like there's not space. If they had been willing to maybe have the feet open up or something to put feet, but, but they're just, they're just kind of here. You, I guess you could stick them out this way. There's, there's just nothing to do with these. They're just there. So let's go ahead and go through the transformation sequence because, um, you know, it, it, it has one. Um, you know, that's, that's most of it right there. <laughs> you know, we, we want to turn around the waist. So there, we'll, we'll spin at the waist and we'll pull the arms out. And you got some little doors down here. And of course we need to open up the shell of a turret and then it goes against here. Now, um, the robot mode is, is pretty decent. It's got, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, not super articulated. And I, you know, I kind of, I kind of wish that there was more that you could do with the arms, but uh, but it looks good. Oh wait, here do we? Yeah, we want to. Okay, we expand the legs. Okay, so there we go. Now we got a little bit of a taller Grimlock, and uh, yeah, I think that we can. Yeah, you can rotate the arms at the shoulder, but but there's no joint that allows the shoulder to pivot out from the body. So the arms are locked against the body, which, which does kind of hurt the play value of the robot mode a little bit. Uh, the toy looks decent. You know, his robot mode 
looks great. You know, let, let's look at the, uh, the head sculpt here. You know, he's got that War Within head sculpt that kind of makes it look like he's got gnashed, spiky teeth behind his faceplate, which I always thought was kind of a creative interpretation of the traditional Grimlock face. Again, the the sculpt on this and detail, this is, you know, some of the 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 aesthetics of of the molds are kind of at a high point for this line. Uh, he, you know, just looking at him, if he's on a shelf, he looks good, and uh, you know, he's just not super super play worthy. And I think that's what, what probably hurts him the most. And maybe it, maybe I'm looking at it wrong. Because if you look at this figure as more of kind of a collector's item and not something that you're going to take off, take off the shelf and actually play with a lot, but rather something to look at and see the transform as, as just an extra perk, then it really is pretty cool. Uh, you know, the, the legs have a lot of articulation. You can still get them into some some good-looking uh, poses that way. Uh, it's just that that transform is disappointing, and the posability in the upper body is is pretty limited. So, so that is Grimlock. Uh, not bad. Certainly not bad, but, but certainly... There's room for improvement. You know, there's definitely room for improvement in this toy. Uh, nonetheless, he he's cool. You know, I, I this is another one where I don't regret getting him. Uh, you know, it wasn't like when I transformed him, it was like, oh, I should take this back. But there's been very, very few Transformers toys that I've ever taken back. Titanium Megatron being one of the few to reach that lofty goal because it was so bad. This is not that bad. Um, but there are better versions of Grimlock out there. And, you know, I, I feel like it's a bit of a shame because he feels good. He feels tight. I, I, I really wish that, that I could pull the shoulders out, you know, so that he could get into more dynamic poses, more Grimlock kind of poses. And and there's there's never going to be another toy like this. You know, Dreamwave went belly up before they could even finish the War Within series. This, this has kind of been retconned out of Transformers history. So this alt mode doesn't even really exist anymore in the canon. So so this is what we've got. And I think that's the biggest shame is that there's so many things about it that are pretend that, that are cool, but so much is unrealized. And that's probably the biggest problem with the Titanium series as a whole is that there's so much unrealized potential that I think comes down to they they just they didn't have the experience of the Takara designers to help them solve the problems that they encountered making these toys. That, that you know, it, it's it's not that they're bad designers. It's not that the people were stupid. It's not anything like that. Um, you know, this, just making this, just, just coming up, you know, being able to manufacture this and, and, and have it work. That is an achievement. The, and it's an achievement that we as consumers take for granted because we are used to, to manufacturers and professional companies producing stuff that works and that looks good. And we forget just how much effort would go into making something like this. 
So it's easy to throw stones and say, oh, you know, the arms don't don't swivel out and oh the transform is is stupid but you know this is an achievement and the people who who came up with this and, and who designed this probably did the best that they were able to do with the with the tools and the resources and the experience that they had and it's and it may, and it's probably not fair to compare them to people that have been designing this stuff for like 25 years at that point. You know, it's, it's really not a fair comparison. So, so yeah, that, that is Grimlock. Um, you know, say, you know, seven, you know, seven or eight, maybe an eight. Let's give them an eight out of 10. Yeah. So, yeah, seven, more of a seven. Okay. I'm trying to be respectful here. <laughs> so, so that is Grimlock. Let's show another one that we have shown on this show before. I called it a show. We're a show. For, for those who don't know, this is a show. It's a show. This is Rodimus. And uh, this is not like a War Within Rodimus. Uh, I don't think that Rodimus ever uh, appeared in War Within. Uh, it is obviously trying to to kind of reimagine the Gen 1 Rodimus Prime vehicle mode as a uh, as a camper and personally I really like this toy. I understand that there's some there's some stuff happening up here that that could be better. Um, it, it, it's a weird looking toy. You know, the dynamics that the are odd the the way that things fit together is a little bit odd but uh oh he kind of came apart but you know i i i, I kind of wish oh wait here there there we go so we've got you know we've got the the hood that sticks out and then we got this big gap here and then the the wheels are back here i, I wish that that gap weren't there um but overall i like this this is, you know, it's a fully realized camper version of Rodimus Prime where he turns entirely into his vehicle mode. There's no disappointing command deck like the Gen 1 version. Because let's not, you know, let's not forget that the original Rodimus Prime was not a great toy. Uh, it was kind of a stinker. So, so this one is is i'm gonna say a marked step up and yeah we've got some really nice translucent blue here that looks great the the fire de detail on the front looks really good um the fire painting on the side is very nicely done and the colors in general are really nice now let's go ahead and transform him here and I'm going to see if I can do that. You know, no, I'm not going to try and do that because there, there's a light right in my face. So I can't, I, 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 I can't transform this by feel right now. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull that. Yeah, you saw earlier that there's these little pegs here and here that want to plug into the backs of the wrists. And we separate that. And then you can have the whole figure stand up like that. And then you separate the legs. You can flip out the feet. And then you're going to take these, these panels and you're just going to fold them in like that. And that's a really nice transform for the back half of this. That works very well. Now we're going to take the arms, which are not really all that well disguised. But, you know, they, they, they're camper shaped. And then we're going to flip out the fists because there's these little sliders on the insides of the arms. So we do that with both sides. And they actually pop out a little bit. Push out the fist. And so there we go. And now we're going to do this. Now, n notice that I can push up the arms like this. This, uh, this this chest piece slides like that and the whole thing is going to collapse this way and it's going to meet with the waist here and then we swivel around the head 
And now we rotate the shoulder, bring the arm down, and if you haven't already, pull the arm out. And so there we have, you know, we'll rotate that. Oh, and then we take the, uh, the canopy here, swivel it around. We can also take the wing things, swivel those up, and then we just spread them out like that to give him his trademark back wing things. We're gonna swivel the whole thing at the waist. And now we have Rodimus or Rodimus Prime, but that is, that is the guy. Now, let's just go ahead and point out the obvious. Hello, hello, there, there, there's, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of hollow happening right here. Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely some hollow here. Look at that. Hi, hi, how's everyone doing? Uh, so, yes, you have that. You have a lot of distance between here and here. So the body proportions are, are a little bit odd, especially when you're looking at him from the side. But let's just go ahead and take a look at this guy on the other camera and look at him in his robot mode. And the robot mode is fully posable. He's got working shoulder joints and working elbow joints and working leg joints and he can swivel his head he's and when you're not focusing specifically on an angle that shows that hollowness he's actually a pretty decent looking figure is he the best version of rodimus that we've ever seen and no, but you know what? He's also not the worst. And at the time that he came out, he was probably the best version of Rodimus that we've ever seen. Well, let's see. Uh, when did when did uh, Energon Rodimus come out? I'm just curious because I really like Energon Rodimus, and that's one of my favorites. I think that that one's better. So, uh, so Mo Monica's Monica's doing some checking, but. Uh, yeah, you know, this is 2004. Okay, so at this point when he came out, he was not the best version of Rodimus that came out, but he also wasn't the worst. He was right in the middle because I think that there have only been three unless you're counting the MicroMaster Hot Rod that came with Star Convoy. Um, but I don't count that because that's like Hot Rod. So, so yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that at the time this came out, he was only the third Rodimus figure to have come out. There would have been the original Gen 1 Rodimus Prime, and then Energon Rodimus, and then this guy. And you know what? I think he's pretty cool. Uh, oh, that, Dudley is wants to get on my lap. Okay, here we go. Okay, come on, Dudders. Come on. There you go. There you go, Dudley. Oh, he's a good kitty. He's a good kitty. Can, can I have this? I can have it. He's letting me have it. I can have it. Yay. Can I have it still? Yes, I can have it. All right. This is Dudley. For those who don't know, this is Dudley. And, and Dudley is awesome. I love Dudley. He's going to lay on my, on my lap for a bit. There you go, buddy. Yeah, you just you just hang out. You just dig your claws into my knee. It's okay. I don't mind a bit, sweet kitty. Oh, look at that. So, so Dudley has joined us. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so that is Ener or not Energon. That is Titanium Rodimus, and uh, I would say that uh, you know definitely definitely pretty decent you know i'm glad that i got this i am actively glad that i got this one uh for for a line that uh that has its ups and downs this is a definite high point he, he's a really nice figure and and i like him you can make fun you're allowed 
you can say no, he sucks, but but I I am going to maintain my opinion. Thank you, thank you. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look. So oh oh yes, um, Mike Spicer is here. Holy crap, Mike Spicer! A toast to Mike Smi Mike Smicer. Okay, so Mike, I'm on number four of these. And 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 thinking is hard at this point. It's really hard. I'm starting to slur my words. But anyway, Mike Spicer is here. Welcome, Mike. Thank you for dropping by. Everybody say hi to Mike Spicer. A toast to Mike Spicer. Oh darn. We're gonna have to pour number five. Here we go, pouring number five. You can't see it because it's not in the camera view, but I'm pouring it. There we go. So I got number five. All right. So that's uh, th that was Grimlock. And then let's move on to... Let let's go ahead and take a look at another Prime. This is War Within Prime. And this was sold in a two-pack with Me with Megatron. It's uh, because it was a two-pack. It did not come with one of these little platforms, which makes it a little bit a uh, little bit unique. But uh, this is him now. Uh, it's it's not a bad vehicle mode. Uh, it, it it is a little bit wonky. You know, you, you, you see it and, you know, you can tell that it doesn't really want to want to hold on to its shape. It, it's not terrible, but but it's really not very solid. And, and that, that definitely hurts it uh, because the design overall is not bad. Uh, you know, again, these War Within designs are actually pretty cool. And, and I think that a lot of people really wanted to see these designs realized in toy form, but you can tell that the die casting on this one kind of looks, it, 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 it looks a little bit muddy. Uh, the edges are not crisp, and, uh, and you can see that he, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't want to, to stay lined up. You know, I, ideally, the, the, the chest here is supposed to meet up with with the canopy and and, and it just doesn't want to go uh, you know it, it's it's sort of almost there maybe if I kind of push from the back here we can do that but then the arms disengage uh, the joints are really are, are, are really loose and you can see where years ago I injected a little bit of glue in here uh, to kind of tighten it up but they, it is a very very floppy toy and and that's that is probably one of the the biggest problems with this toy is just how floppy everything is. Uh, he apparently wants to transform because all the pieces just kind of keep falling out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna pull the chest down here like this, and, and you see everything just wants to move. So we've got this pivot point right here. There we go. And then just the, the camera. And I think, yeah, I think that, we, oh, we do a, a rotate there, you know, above the, the stomach. And there we'll, we'll spread out the feet. Which even the feet are just kind of, you know, they're, they're loosey-goosey. And, you know, that, that just hurts it so much. Uh, the arms do do this. And then you... Oh, here, let's do that. There we go. And... And there we go. And, you know, they, they, they should kind of click in or something but they don't um, so yeah there we go so that is that is prime and he does come with his ion blaster 
which is uh, which is important. You know, it's it's funny how Optimus Prime's gun is so much a part of his identity. Uh, that you know, this gun design is used over and over again throughout the years and has continued to be kind of reimagined over and over again as part of his design uh, almost as much as having his arms fold against his side when he transforms so we're going to put this we're going to try and put this into his hand there's a little bit of a, of a nub on the handle which makes it not want to go in straight and I almost don't want to force it into his hand for for fear of breaking that plastic but there we go so there we go um, he doesn't have uh, shoulder joints but he does have these joints uh, so you can sort of kind of make his arms move in ways that that sort of make it seem like he's got a functioning shoulder joint but they're so loosey goosey. Um, I, yeah, it's it's a shame because it's a cool design. You know, the, the 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 concept for this and and the way that that it's supposed to work is actually really neat. But this figure is unfortunately not playable at all. Uh, he's just too loosey goosey, and th this this is something that you'll see with a lot of titanium toys, where the metal bits. I know I just said it, but just let me finish before we go there. Uh, the metal bits are just too heavy for for the plastic joints to be able to hold them without them kind of flopping a lot, and, and th that's. That's something that that the people at Galoob, I just don't think that they knew exactly how to deal with that. Um, you know, he's got he's got ball joints at the hips, but but this apparatus around his waist keeps his legs from being able to move much. So he's not terribly poseable, and he's floppy. Uh, you know. Like, on paper, he's awesome, but in implementation, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it, that's it, that's all, that's all I have to say, and oh, I was, I, I said metal like three times, so here we go, uh, by the way, Michael Spicer, the, the secret word is metal, and when I say that, I have to drink, so, uh, one, two, and three. I think I said it like three times. There we go. All right, so that is War Within Optimus Prime. Uh, another one that I, that I don't mind that I have, but I wish it were better than it was. <laughs> I just wish that it were better. That, 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 that's that's where we're at. I, I, I wish that, like, when I held him like this, that he didn't seem like a marionette. I, I, I feel like I could put strings on this guy and put on a show. Uh, it's, it's, it's just not... Like, okay, here, I'm going to make a comparison here. Hybrid convoy. And, you know, see? See? He, he can... He's got metal on him. And, and he's got heavy feet, and he's got metal in his chest, and oh boy, I'm going to be so drunk. Uh, and, but, and, but, and then this, uh, come on. So, anyway, uh, and now I have to say, I have to do this. All right, so, uh, let's look at the other half of that two-pack. And that would be War Within Megatron, who is actively sticking his gun barrel in, in the, the ground here. Um, so this is one that I did a little bit of kit bashing in in an attempt to make him not suck. Uh, I'm just going to say it. Uh, you know, I, and I, I don't like being, being 
overly critical on stuff that that there were real people that worked on this and they and they spent a lot of time and effort to to do this and so i i hate being a dick but this toy stinks <laughs> i'm sorry this, this is uh this piece here is actually it's just an add-on you know it's his shield and so it would plug in i added these wires here so that i could make it give it a little bit more of a transform so uh yeah you, know, you, you got that you see megatron is really just laying down his transform is that he lays down and puts his face in the dirt um and and so oh and he he does pivot at the waist they they did figure out how to make stuff pivot at the waist at gloop so so there was that but uh but we, we can take out the fusion cannon and this was originally a shield and i believe that my intention with this whole thing was to make it i, I forget what i wanted to do I think that I, I, I wanted to make it so that it would flip around, but I don't see how that would work with... Boy, you know, I, I'm a terrible designer, because because I didn't... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I see what's going on here. Okay, so yes, that goes like that, and then, then that goes like that. So this stays on his back, like that, and then these plug in at the sides here, like that, and now... Now his his arms can come out, and we can put down his little his little hip plates, and I can get the other arm to come out, and so we'll just push those in, and then you you've got his fusion cannon, I guess as well. Oh no no, we can stick it on his arm. We can stick it. Oh, it doesn't it doesn't really stay there. It's supposed to, I think. Can we stick it on the other arm? Will it stay? Nope. Nope, it's not going to do that. I guess he has to carry his fusion cannon. But he does have a shoulder cannon, so we, we can we can forgive that, I guess. Um, so there we go. That is... Uh, oh, here. Well, if he'll hold himself up. That is War Within Megatron. I will say that... Uh, that it looks better in robot mode than it did in vehicle mode. Uh, again, we've got the same problem with the shoulders as we had with Grimlock, which kind of figures because the engineering seems very similar as we had with Grimlock. Uh, you know, the fact that he doesn't even have a like a front end that transforms with him. You have to take this thing and just plug it in uh that that's just yeah that that's just kind of sad so you can see why i added these uh these metal uh these met this metal linkage so that at least it transformed rather than pull it off and push it back on but that it, that you know he's again he's having a hard time holding himself up uh it kind of helps i guess if you bend the knees so that they don't uh so that the legs don't collapse inside the lower legs um the poseability uh from the waist down is very nice you know he's he's got a uh, pivoting waist he's got uh hip joints and leg joints and knee joints and at least for this one they they don't have, you know, I, yeah, the feet are just flipping down, but it's just the toes sticking out. So it's not as bad as with Grimlock. But, uh, but again, not great. Uh, you know, really unimpressive alt mode. That, that's, it, once again, this robot would look great on a shelf, but it's not super playable, and the transform is just it's it, it, it's more of a bonus not a very good bonus it's it's the prize at the bottom of the cereal box you know if if it were just a figure like like if this were marketed as a die cast statue 
that also has a secret surprise transform and be like, oh, I can do that. Okay, that's kind of cool. But but as a transformer, and we what we are used to in terms of transformers, this is just not a very good one. So, uh, oh, oh, here, yeah, we can we can do. Look, we can. Um, we'll, we'll just do this, and and wait, we'll do we'll do uh, this uh, right here. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're doing some stuff here, and this is, this is important to the live stream. Okay, so, if you're buying your box of Energon Square cereal, and, and then it's like, oh wait, I got to the end of the box, and look, oh, I got Titanium Megatron, how cool, that's great. But, you know, if, if, you, if you're buying Titanium Megatron and you want a cool Megatron and, and you want a cool Megatron tank, you're, no, this is, this is Megatron laying on his face and putting his shield over his head and saying, I'm a tank now. So, so that is Titanium Megatron. Uh, let's, so, let's go ahead and let's show, oh, another one, I, I, this was another later in, and, and this one kind of shows that they were starting to figure it out. It's another War Within design, this is Prowl. And, uh, for starters, his vehicle mode is pretty big. Yeah, he, he's, he, he, he takes up... A full hand and uh, and whereas you know I, I look at somebody like like Soundwave here and I guess they're similar in size but Prowl is so spread out uh, he's twice the width of Optimus Prime but uh, but you know he's got this vehicle mode now I will say that this whatever's going on here with the arms next to these that that just seems that seems off um, and I'm pretty sure that this is correct, but it just doesn't seem like it's right. Uh, that being said, you, you hold it like this, it's some kind of maybe a hover car or something like that. It actually looks really good. I mean, you have to look down on it to see the wonkiness, but, uh, but, you know, you've got a very cool front end. It looks very police -y. Uh, we, yeah, we've got the, the really nice translucent bits at the top here. The red and the blue look great. The thrusters look great. So, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. These peg in. Uh, you can, you know, raise them up if you want, but technically they, they do peg into the side here for the transform. But, uh, but yeah, that is, you know, it is definitely a C Cybertronian vehicle mode, but it looks definitively like a vehicle. And I, I've kind of messed it up here by, by moving stuff around. So, so here, let me line that up. So yeah, it, it, but it definitely looks like what it's supposed to be. It looks like some kind of a hover vehicle. And, uh, and, and it's for the most part, you know, things are pegged in, things are tight. He's not, he's not trying to fall apart in my hands. And so, yeah, um, there's a little bit of kind of an interference happening here with, oh, wait a minute, you know what? Let me look at something. I'm, I'm just gonna check something because I see, I see these little things that look like hooks. I'm wondering if they're supposed to be like a nubber. No, there isn't. I, I, yeah, I kind of thought maybe there was something that that's supposed to peg into the arms or something like that, but there is not. Um, I wonder. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. I might have this transformed wrong. I think that the legs might collapse a little bit. Hopefully, nope. They they're already collapsed. Okay. Well. I I was wrong. That is how he's supposed to be transformed, and those just get in the way. The the, uh, the the these little extension things do get in the way of the arms a little bit. Um, but 
I'm going to forgive it. It's not super in the way. It, it would have been nice had they had a little notch in the arm that uh, that would allow these things to, you know, like, if there was a hole underneath here and it actually hooked those like that so that it would really lock them into place, then this, this vehicle mode would be, like, ten times better. Well, maybe not ten times better, but it would be... 20% better. That that's a lot less than 10 times. I know. I've been drinking. So so um but nonetheless, it's still a capable vehicle mode. Looks very futuristic. It's very war within. And uh and, and I can see that going So yeah, he is uh his he, he has a uh, a very decent vehicle mode as uh, a lot of these war within titaniums have strived for, but have had varying degrees of success. So let's go ahead and show him in his robot mode. And oh, I will, I, I will just pull this out because the comparison has been made right here before we turn him into a robot. So the comparison has been made between Titanium Prowl and Psycho. Uh, you know, I can, I, I can see some similarities here, but you know, obviously, uh, Prowl is, you know, Psycho is definitely got a more cohesive vehicle mode. Um, but he he has that tr traditional Super Gobots robot mode that looks more like a '50s alien from another planet robot that would shoot something that goes doo -doo 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 -doo, and make little circles that, that come out or you know maybe not even that um whereas he's not going to turn into a warrior looking robot you know that's a little bit more humanoid as though wearing a suit of robotic armor like the transformers typically do but psycho does look like that and he's cool and I like him, but uh, but uh, Dudley doesn't want me to spend much more time on Psycho, as you can hear. So let's go ahead and show Prowl in his robot mode. And so we're going to start by pulling out the legs. And they just pull out. Oh, you, actually, you need to start by disengaging the, the peg ends for these little missile things. And then you can pull out the legs. And you can flip out the feet. He has little feet, just little feet, and which is fine. You know, I'm not, I'm not hating on the feet. And then we've got the, the body here. So you pull these out. Oh, I wonder if those are supposed to stay out. I think that they were supposed to stay out for the vehicle mode. Yeah. Now that I think about it, you know, let me, let me just see if that works. I, I bet that that's going to work better. I know I'm taking a segue here, but I'm 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 going I, I'm going to go back because I want to show you the right the right stuff. Okay, yeah, that's it. I think that this is the vehicle mode. That's the vehicle mode. And at least I think, if it's not the vehicle mode, it should be because it actually looks pretty awesome that way. So now I'm going to unpeg the missile things, pull out the feet, pull out the legs, flip out the feet, separate the legs, pull these missile things back. I'm going to tip the front of the vehicle forward. I'm going to flip up the head. Uh, let's see, there should be a pivot here. Oh, you know what? Here, I'm going to take these things. I'm going to pull them out this way instead. And then I'm going to pivot at the waist. And then I believe that, yes, the body just slides like this. And see, you're seeing for the first time tonight, we're seeing some, some real transform moves like the body pivoting and then sliding. And it seems like the designers at Galoob are finally starting to get comfortable with making the geometry work for them rather than against them. 
And then you're going to take the arms out. So these things are going to collapse in for the robot mode rather than being, being in for the vehicle mode. You're going to take these things and you're going to move them out. That's going to make the shoulders. And then you pull the arm down like that and pull this arm down like that. And then we can rotate the arm and that's going to reveal the fist. The, the fists don't actually have holes in them, uh, which is kind of odd for a Transformers toy. Uh, this one doesn't seem to want to rotate. I don't think it rotates. Why isn't it rotating? Huh. I don't know why this, it feels like it's stuck. Oh wait. Okay, so it rotates there. Okay, so let's do that. Yeah, okay. I, I almost tried to rotate it at the wrong place, and that would have been bad, because then I would have broken my toy, and I would have been sad. So there we go. And now we take these, these rocket things, and they go up. And now those little hooky things that I was talking about wanting to have them hold the arms, they actually kind of plug into the back here. and they give him his trademark shoulder cannons up above him. And that, that looks cool. Let's, let's go ahead and I'm gonna put him in a pose here. I'm gonna show him on the other camera, but he looks great. He really legitimately looks great. This is, this is probably the high point of the whole titanium line because he's got cool things happening. He's got a dynamic robot mode. He's very posable. You know, he's got shoulder joints that move out and in and up and down elbow joints. He's got forearms that twist. He's got a twisting waist. He's got fully articulated knees and legs. He is cool. And his his proportions are dynamic. He, he's just, you know, let's, uh, let's adjust the head. You know, we, you can twist the head a little bit. So this is, this is an excellent, excellent toy. He feels good. He, notice that he's able to hold his pose. You know, they've, they've finally made a titanium toy that really, that really is able to function as both a Transformers figure and a vehicle. And he looks like who he's supposed to be. And he's got a decent alt mode that, that doesn't seem kind of half-assed. He's excellent. There's just no other way to say it. Titanium Prowl is excellent. And, and it's a shame because he was so close to the end. You know, they, they, were, they were figuring it out. You know, they, yeah, uh, they, they had some stumbles, but you could tell that they were learning and they were starting to get good at it. But by that point, the reputation of the line, I think, was just pretty bad. And, uh, and people were ready to, pe people had just given up. I had given up, you know, I, I wasn't excited about the next titanium toy. So, and then I got him and it's like, oh, wow, that's awesome. He looks great, but it was not meant to be. So that is titanium prowl, you know, absolutely phenomenal. And so let's go ahead and let's take a look at another character. This was, uh, this is Dreamwave all over. Here we go. This is the Fallen. And he's got a tank mode. Now, what I will say for this tank mode is he's got a turret that rotates and guns that elevate uh, the the detail on on the treads is is nice, but you can tell already that that the way that this transforms, he's 
I, I keep trying to get them to hold together. And see, here's the problem. You got all this emptiness here. And these are just kind of hanging out here. It would have been better. I'm, I'm just going to throw out a very simple solution. If they had molded these treads so that they ended here, they wrap around a hole, and so this this part is tread, and then back here, they make this something else and just have this panel peg into the hip on both sides to hold it in place. That, and just not make this have to be tread. Uh, do something else, you know, maybe, maybe have a wheel back here that's at an angle or something, but not continue, because with these coming straight out and having nothing to hold them in place and this joint being so loosey-goosey, it, it just makes this vehicle mode, it, it, it really makes it just not even playable. Uh, the stuff doesn't want to stick together. He he just seems like, like kind of a, a loosey-goosey assemblage of parts. And, and that's a shame because it, it, it's, it's a cool design but it's just very badly implemented. Very badly implemented. So you can see them from all... And you see, even just, just moving them around, he, he wants to flop all over the place. So that... That is the Fallen in his vehicle mode. It's... You know, he's got a couple guns. Um, there's... There's these details here that don't at all look like fists. And, uh, and yeah, you know, it's, it's a shame because I want to like it more than I do. But, but it's just, you know, the fact that this, this kind of, kind of pitches forward, you know, it doesn't want to hold itself up. It, it, it's just so, ugh, it, it, I, just, I, 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 I want it. To, to do this and it doesn't it wants to do this and I want these to do this and oh my gosh so let's go ahead and let's transform this mess <laughs> I'm sorry uh, so I'm going to take these things that are flopping around I'm going to fold them up since they obviously don't want to be tank treads anymore and then I'm going to take that it's going to shock you to learn that this turret is actually his arms. I know, who knew, right? Um, so we're gonna swing those around and then you have the front of the robot chest there and then you can fold up the head and turn it around. And then we, we okay, his, his lower body is over here and his upper body is over here, but, but it, does, it does go back together so we can do that. And we'll just kind of hold it together there and then fold down the legs. And then we're going to rotate at the waist. And then we'll flip the feet out. Now, I will say they gave us feet, like real feet, that that, that can hold him up. He can, he'll be able to stand. And they transform in a way that that doesn't look like feet. So, so that's good. And now here, here's where things get okay. So we take we take this. This is his, you know, the tank tread stuff. It's gonna fold up against his back, and then we flip these things this way, and they they painted fire. He's got painted fire behind his head. Uh. I, that's, 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 that's very metal. <laughs> it's not a sticker. It's not a sticker. Uh, a sticker of fire would be worse. You know what? I feel like I need a double. <coughs> so, um. I can, uh, I can actually pivot the arm sideways and then pivot the, uh, the fists a little bit and that just gives them a little bit more posability there. And so 
there we go. Let's take a look at this robot mode because the robot mode for the most part is pretty cool. I mean, I, I love the style. I love all of the rivets. I love the black and orange. I love that he's scored. I love that he looks kind of clunky and boxy. Uh, this, the painted on fire is not doing it for me. I, I love the cracks that they have molded in. Um, the fact that his, his panels just keep wanting to flop down is, it, 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 you know, there's, there's so much about him that seems like it should be so badass, and and yet the 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 loosey goosiness, and, and and the fact that things just kind of keep hanging off of him, and his waist wants to fall off. I it's it, it's oh my gosh, you know I I I I, I like him, and yet and yet. And, and here's the other thing. So let me let me just get a get a close up. He's got he's got his own emblem. They've decided that that the fallen, who is a fallen prime, uh, I guess he decided to create his own faction symbol, which is the symbol of his own face on fire. Uh, wh wh what I I I. I, I I don't understand. I uh, here you can see a bit, so they they have his his thing and they and instead of giving him an Autobot or Decepticon symbol and I feel like there was somebody at Galoob that thought this was just awesome. And it's, I mean, it, it, on, on one hand, it, it's, it's pretty, I mean, I am really perplexed here because, I mean, a Transformer with fire coming out of his face is cool. It's like the Ghost Rider of Transformers, but, but wearing it as an insignia, it's, cheese it's cheese it's just cheese i why you have a badass character and 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 he's got so much going for him and then and then the, there, and then there's this and then there's this and oh by the way these things keep doing this and and did i mention that that happens uh <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I want him to be cool. It's it's like finding out that that the tough guy in school was was actually afraid of you all along. It's you know <sighs> That's the fallen. <laughs> that's all I have to say about the fallen. <laughs> but there's good news. There is great news. And, uh, because now we are going to get to the heaviest metal of the heavy metal Transformers. This, this is the guy that sets the standard. Yeah, I know. I said it. But I'm, I'm owning it. And, you know, this guy deserves me saying this a bunch of times <sighs> because now we are going to look at 20th anniversary masterpiece Optimus Prime that's right here he is Transformers Optimus Prime this so uh, this is not an Optimus Prime trailer uh, we were at a uh, at a toy store. Was it? Uh, it was. Oh, okay. Th it, at a hobby store, and there was a uh, a scale a, a, a just a it was a toy truck, but it was a, like a model toy truck. It was a Kenworth truck, and it was it seemed like just the right size to be a trailer for 
masterpiece Optimus Prime, and as you can see, it really does look the part. And at some point, I'd like to decorate it to look like an Optimus Prime trailer, but I haven't done it in uh, in 20 years. <laughs> it's you know th that's the thing. This is the 20th anniversary Optimus Prime. We are now at the 35th anniversary. It is over 15 years old. I know, it doesn't seem like it should be that old. It doesn't feel like it was that long ago. But yeah, this is original masterpiece Optimus Prime. I'm going to go ahead and take off the trailer. Yeah, I wanted to show it because uh, it, it's cool. And, and uh, yeah, at some point I'll, I'll finish that trailer and then we'll, we'll look at it. So this is... This is Optimus Prime in his vehicle mode. This was the first, first masterpiece to be done. And, uh, and, and you know, I'm gonna adjust the lighting just a little bit here because it seems like there's kind of a, a dark side there. So there we go. So uh, we've got real rubber tires. We've got, we've got spring-loaded shocks. Now, I will openly say that the vehicle mode on, on Masterpiece Optimus Prime is, is probably the weakest feature of the entire toy. Because it doesn't, it doesn't really look to me like a, like a realistic truck. It's got a lot of fantastic detail and uh and you know it's very hefty but it, you know it's it's obvious that this is a transformer yeah you can see a lot of the joints and stuff and and you know that's i'm gonna forgive it because what they achieved with this toy is monumental at a time when nothing like this had been attempted before this was around the same time as the Alternators line. Except whereas the Alternators tried to give you realistic models, 1 24th scale models of real vehicles that could turn into articulated Transformers robot characters. And you know you, they, they they would have a lot of kibble and they and the robot modes would be a, a little bit hard to pose, but nonetheless the focus was on having a fantastic vehicle mode. This Optimus Prime toy tried to give us a an acceptable truck mode, you know, a good approximation of his Gen One uh, vehicle mode with. A, with a really faithful version of his cartoon robot mode. And that, that is something, you know, these days we're kind of used to that. But not back in 2005, 2004. This would have been 2004. And so, you know, you can see here that from the front, he looks like Optimus Prime. He looks, you know, his truck mode looks really good from the front. The details are fantastic. You can see that they even painted a little silver around the edges of the windows, and they painted the windshield wipers, and you have the rivets that are in here, and then you have a beautiful, shiny, vacuum metalized grill, and you have the acrylic for the... Uh, for the headlights and his trademark silver stripe that goes across from the front here. And then even looking at the detail on the side, yeah, sure, you've got this happening here where you can see some of the joints, but you've also got all of this detail molded in here. And again, more of that really nice detail painting here. And look at the wheels. Just look at that. You know, it says Desert Dog. I don't know why it says Desert Dog. I'm sure that that's some kind of uh, some kind of a uh, an Easter egg, but I don't know why. Um, you know, the the detail on the tires and and the shocks that are molded in there. Everything about it is just lovingly done. 
L look at this. Look at the way that the shocks work. You know, and even though it didn't come with a trailer, it still had a port here built into the leg to plug in a trailer, which th being able to use that Kenworth trailer took no modification whatsoever. It just plugged right in. You can see these hydraulics, which are used for in the arms, and they look fantastic. Uh, yeah, he's he's got tail lights. Look at that, and of course, he's heavy. He's got a lot of metal in him, and yeah, I said it. I'm just I'm going with it. I'll drink later. Uh, so this is a is a really good impressive vehicle mode and sure it's it's not super realistic but it's still really cool but that's not you know th this is you 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 put them in this mode and you roll them around and and you play with the wheels and everything but what you want what we all want is to see him in robot mode. Yes, that that so that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna. Robot mode. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! 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 Um, it's at the time, the first time I transformed him. I have to say, it it was it was a beast. It, it really was. And of course, I didn't read the instructions because that's cheating. I, I did refer back to them after, you know, I was involved, but, but still. So let's go ahead. Let's do this. He's Optimus Prime. So you know where we're going to start. We're going to start with the legs. We're going to separate the legs here like this. And we just pull that out. Now, when you're transforming him back into a truck, they have built little spring-loaded catches into the tanks. You push on the catch to get it to collapse, and then you can just pull it out. So that's what locks it in. And you remember all those titanium toys that wanted to you know, suck back into their legs? This doesn't do that because of that feature. So then we're gonna pull out this panel on the foot and rotate the foot. It's such an unusual maneuver to transform his foot and then you've then you've got this little heel thing that's just up in there and you flip that out so you've got to get it with your finger there you go and then you close that and look at that foot it makes a perfect Optimus Prime foot this that looks great and it's solid this little truck hitch, the trailer hitch, just folds right in. <laughs> You've got these vents here that uh, that can flatten out, and when you press on them, they pop out. Look at that. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. Why does it do that? I don't know. Does it need to? No, but they made it do it. Let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, this time, I'm going to pull that heel out ahead of time. It's a little bit easier to do it before you rotate the foot. And then we're going to pull out that panel again and rotate and line everything up and close it. There we go. So that's the leg. So we got two legs. We're going to fold this little panel up like this and fold that little panel up like this. And now we can pull out his stomach grill. Yeah, he has two different grills. He has the truck grill, which has four divisions, and then the stomach grill, which only has two. So we can pull that out like that. And then we can pull the shoulders straight back, just like that. You see, see how we created a gap here? We also separated the front of the arms from the headlights. And you can see it a lot better on this side. You see how we've got the gap here and the gap here. And then we're gonna pull the arms out. Once again, 
we're sticking with that original transform maneuver <coughs> excuse me where you pull the arms out from the sides like this and then pull the shoulders out you know faithful to the original but this time we're gonna pull the arms up like this and get them way out of the way because there's some stuff that has to happen in the front so so we've got the the bumper here and it snaps into these fender pieces so you need to release it from that just like that and then you're also going to open up the passenger compartment so you're going to open up what becomes the chest and there's even a chair in there like you can put a dude in there and there's a seat there's actually a fold-up seat, which is, you know, I considered not folding up the seat because it's so hard to reach in there and get it to fold down, but you can take the arms of the chair and fold them up. Those are going to be Prime's antenna. And, uh, they're almost, 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 they're almost, yes, okay, there, there it is. I can catch it with my finger and fold it down. Yay, I got it. So, now we're going to take the whole grill and bumper assembly like that and pull it straight out. And now, we can tip the fenders forward. And we've got these things. We're going to pull them straight out like that. <laughs> so, at this point, we can... Let's go ahead, I'm gonna rotate at the waist, and I'm going to open this little door here, and I'm gonna press here and pivot this whole thing that has his head on it. And then we can just go ahead and bring the antenna up, and then you can close that little door. And so at this point, we need, we've got this matrix chamber here, we rotate it sideways, and then we're going to collapse, let's see, so we're gonna collapse the grill against the matrix chamber. And I believe that we rotate this around and then fold this down in front of that. I think that that's how it goes. And then the whole thing is just gonna push up into the chest like that. So at this point, Point. I know I've been saying at this point a lot and uh, and it's because I have to think real hard because I'm inebriated but we're going to take these side pieces these fenders and they're gonna rotate around and here and this is this is masterful what they do they rotate around while tucking up like this you see and then this one's gonna rotate around and tuck up like that. And that's gonna snap into place like that. And at this point, we can bring the whole body forward and put his, his stomach grill in place. And now in the back, those two panels that had the headlights can meet and you see how they kind of have a, have a finger meshing thing happening in the back there and they close against his back. We can close the chest. And now the, no, no, prime stop. Okay, you know what? I'm thinking that the bumper needs to go the other way. Maybe I was wrong. So let me do this. take these side things out of the way because oh my finger was in there there we go okay we'll rotate that around this way and try the bumper that way and now we'll put the side things up against his his rib cage and close the things around the back again bring this forward again and give him his his abs his abs grill 
That's right. When Optimus Prime says, hey, check out my grill, he's talking about his abs. And now the fists are very interesting what they do. They have these panels here in the underside of the arms, which you gotta get a fingernail in. That pulls out like that, and that one flips out like that. And now the whole thing's become sliders to eject the fists, and then they flip in upside down, just like that. And now you've got articulated fingers, which uh, honestly, uh, how, uh, sh show of hands in the internet, is there anybody that, that has this toy that didn't have him make rude gestures immediately upon getting him out of the box? Anyone, anyone, no? Okay, so uh, now we can put the arms down and there's a little bit of a slide here in the shoulders. It goes in like that. And that is Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Of course, he does have a matrix. Which is in there. And there, there's an LED that lights up, but my, my battery is 15 years old, so I need to replace it. So it, it doesn't light up right now. But you can take the matrix out. Uh, it's kind of a pain to get out, so I'm not taking it out. He uh, he came with a little Megatron that that he can hold. He's got a uh, a little panel in his arm, and see the so he's got like a communication array here. I should show this on the other camera. So here, so. You know, he's got that communication array in his arm, and he's got one on each side. This one shows uh, cartoon Starscream, and then this one over here uh, Can I get it? There we go. That one has cartoon Bumblebee and see, it's even got little buttons molded in and everything. And look at, so here, here's those, those hydraulics that you could see in truck mode. And look at that. Yeah, you know, when you flex them, they, they work and they move and everything about him is so intricately detailed. And unfortunately, he's really way too tall to get into this camera appropriately, but I'm gonna try anyway, because he's just an amazing toy. There we go. And I'm gonna adjust the light. There we go light a little bit there we go and adjust the focus and that is truly a masterpiece I believe that it was a Toy Fair magazine that uh, that said that this was the best toy of all time and you know what it, it really was um, now this is the American version with the short uh, uh, smokestacks. Of course, the Takara version gets to have the long smokestacks, and they they would be nice. But uh, you know, you can see that. So this is this is what we started with, and this is what we got. And he is he is heavy and he is metal, but gosh, he is amazing. And let me put his arm down there we go yeah, get his arm down a little bit there we go and so that is original prime and masterpiece prime everything about him is just I mean the word masterpiece really does apply in this case and it's something that at the time that this came out there was nothing else like it. Nothing, nothing this ambitious had ever been, had ever been attempted for mass market, at least not by Hasbro, certainly. And uh, 
and you, know, you look at him. Oh, here, let me hang up on Starscream. You know, from every angle, he looks fantastic. He's got details all over him. And, you know, even though, obviously, they've, uh, they've done new versions, and uh, the newer version came with a trailer, and uh, I would say, and it has a better vehicle mode, and it has a, uh, a robot mode that's easily just as good as this one. But this is the first time that they did it. And... Uh, and, you know, oh, also, here, you know, you, you look at the face and, you know, it has a button in the back so that, you know, his mouth will move. So he can be like, Autobots, roll out! And, you know, he, you can have him talk. He can be like, yes, I agree. The Titanium series was disappointing in many ways. Freedom is the right of all sentient beings. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um... And, you know, this is a, a, a slight segue, and no, I'm not going to make you walk away from your screens, but isn't this what we were hoping to see when we found out that there was going to be a live-action Transformers movie? Yeah. This, this is what we wanted. We wanted this. We wanted things that looked like alternators. We wanted to see the characters that we grew up with reimagined in a way that that actually fits into the real world and this delivers on that promise and i had a friend his name was ed and he saw this toy and uh and he said hey that's optimus prime i had i had that when i was a kid and i said well you didn't have this one and he says, no, yeah, yeah, I did. I said, no, you, you didn't have this one. I said, y y and I pulled out this one. I said, this is what you had when you were a kid. And he's like, no, that's too small. I had this. And I, and I said, Ed, this, this came out in, in 2004. And he's like, no, no, it didn't. <laughs> and I could not get him to, to, to realize that the, the reason why he thought he had this when he, when he was a kid is because this seems much bigger when your hands are only this big. But, uh, but you know, he just didn't believe me. <laughs> he really did not believe me that, that he didn't have this. But I promise you, Ed, you didn't have this toy when you were a kid. I mean, Ed is younger than me, but, but I, I don't think that he was, he was a kid when... <laughs> so... The, yeah. This just, this is what happens when a company that has 20 years of experience making transforming robot toys and making robots that have die cast parts puts their engineering minds and their creative genius into building something that is truly phenomenal. And that's what this is. Original masterpiece Optimus Prime, worthy of the name. And, you know, at this point, we've had some amazing masterpiece toys. And the other masterpiece Optimus Prime is also really, really amazing and comes with a trailer. So, is this the best toy ever made at this point? I'm not sure. I honestly don't know the answer to that question. But you know what? It's up there. It really is. So, that's, that's it. Uh, we, we went a little bit over 
three hours, and I, I apologize, but I mean, I, I want I, I wanted to show you, you know, I mean, I know that a lot of you already have seen this, but, but it's still really, really cool. And for those of you who haven't, this is it. Um, so, Sh Savage Shark wants to know if he has the gun. Oh, yeah, he has the gun. Wait a minute, here, I have it right over here uh, underneath a pile of titanium toys. So, here, yeah, you want to see this. Um, so, we have... We have... Oh, what, the, the, the flip-up... The communicator? Yes, yes. Yes, he has that. He, he absolutely has the flip-up communicator, uh, which I showed earlier, you know. You know, that, that was, uh, that, you know, he's got the Starscream one, and he's got Bumblebee. I showed that earlier, though. Oh, you missed it. Monica missed it. Everybody, I, I hope the rest of you were paying attention, but um, I think Monica had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that on the internet? So, uh, he also comes with, an, with a Megatron that he can hold. So let's uh, let's go ahead and put Megatron in his hand. So he's got Megatron. Of course, it would not be an Optimus Prime toy if it did not come with his Ion Blaster. Beautifully done, beautifully sculpted. Again, very Gen 1 accurate. So, you know, he's got that. But here's the other thing that you can do. You can close up the hand and you can flip that in. And then we have also got his Energon Axe. So, you know, they. This toy is a love letter. It is a love letter to to Shuri. Was that his name? Sh sh uh, I scrolled past it, so. <laughs> Wait a minute here. I want to get the name right. Uh, oh, Shoji. Shoji Kawamori. This toy is a love letter to sh Shoji Kawamori. Kaw boy. I, I, have, I, I have had too much to drink. Shoji Kam Kawamori. It is a love letter. You shut up. <laughs> uh, it is a love letter to the fans. It is a love letter to the entire Transformers franchise. It is a love letter to Optimus Prime and what he represents as a character. And it is heavy metal, and it is awesome. And so, that being said, <sighs> and so, with that, thank you everyone for joining me for a really long but pretty involved and and I think kind of hardcore. I mean, it was, it was, it was, uh, it, it, it was metal. It was metal. Not, not catch you later, Bill and Ted. <laughs> not, not live long and pr prosper. Uh, <laughs> um, and, uh, and not hang loose. So, right here, let, let, I'll, I'll, I'll toast to everyone. Uh, so... A toast to everyone. Uh, a toast to Colleeny. A toast to Joy. And Amanda. And Kyoji. Oh, I'm getting to the really good part. And Satsune. And Machiavellic. And oh boy, that list got bigger. Uh, and Mighty Muffins. And Grayscale. And Chris Remley. Mm. 
wait, lemon seed, <coughs> and Mason fur, and Tim Kangaroo, and Connie Field, and Ty Guy. And of course, Brick Wode. Looking forward to seeing you next week, Brick. And of course, happy birthday, Savage Shark. And I just swallowed a lemon seed. And of course, Michael Spicer. And a toast to you, my lovely wife, who I have missed so much this week. And a toast to you, Retrobot, because with I couldn't do this without you, and I wouldn't want to. Toast. Oh. Tune in next week. It's going to be Skylinks, the ultimate Autobot, with one of the two ultimate co-hosts. There we go. And uh, and then, you know, there might be stuff throughout the week. I, I haven't thought that far ahead, and I've had a lot to drink. So, have a wonderful evening, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. I will see you next week, if not sooner. And hey, if you had fun tonight and you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe, click the thumbs up button, and tell friends and family and people online and in forums and everywhere else to, to join us because, you know, we're still trying to grow and every little bit helps. Thank you so much. I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it without you. And now I think I need to lay down. And Wesley, the cat host. Setsuni said that. <laughs> Good night, Setsuni.